a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. Please go ahead and give him the glory for his faithfulness, his loving kindness for the privilege of life. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. Give him praise. Give him adoration for preservation from January, February, March, and we're in April. Father, we are eternally grateful for your power, your presence, your glory, your righteousness, your salvation, your provision in this assembly. To you alone be all the praise. Give him glory for what he said to do in our midst this morning. Father, we thank you because of your faithfulness. Blessed be your name. Be magnified in Jesus. Precious name we have given thanks. Exodus 33 and verse 14. Exodus 33, 14. And he said, my presence shall go with thee and I will give thee rest. Lift your voice and make demands for God's glorious presence in our midst today. Father, envelope this house with the glory of your presence. Go ahead and provoke the presence, the manifestation, the power of God in this house today. Father, I make demands for your presence in this house today. Around my life, around my family, upon my brother, my sister, in the name of Jesus, we need your presence and we ask oh God that you envelop us with the density of your presence the undeniability of your presence be thou glorified in the name of Jesus and Psalm 119 verse 105 we're making demand for the word of God Psalm 119 verse 105 the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path we're going to be provoking the strength of god's word lift your voice and say father we make demands for the power of the word in this assembly today ask for the definite word that definite word that life transforming word in the name of jesus that word that we annihilate every trace of curses in my life in the name of jesus go ahead father send me my own word send us our word send us our word oh god blessed be your name blessed be your name in the name of jesus christ and of course it is blessing sunday hebrews chapter 7 and verse 7 and without any contradiction they blessed the less is blessed by the better we are asking of the lord father the blessing that is upon your servant our father and the lord let it rub upon my life today go ahead and ask of the lord father let it be a flow of god's blessings through your servant upon my life that will eliminate every curse upon my life upon my family in the name of jesus send us that word in the name of jesus blessed be your name acts of the lord father lay your help upon your servant help him that we might receive help blessed be your name in jesus precious name we are praying somebody know that god heard and answer us let that amen be better with a bb club offering and a loud shout of praise thank you father in jesus precious name i'm aware that you're in with your testimonies from previous encounters ministers of god will be at the glory entrance gate to receive you and in a short while be given the privilege to share with the larger house with jesus joy and a shout of praise please help me welcome the praise team god bless you can we lift up the name of the lord can we worship god for an amazing month so far it's by his mercies that we are not consumed we love you lord thank you jesus can you just give the Lord a wave offering? Say, I love you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. Oh.
Hallelujah. Mike, 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 Mike. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Clap your hands, all ye people. Shout to the Lord. Hallelujah. With a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Amen. Please be seated in your heavenly places. Amen. I'll be calling on the following to share their testimonies. If you hear your test, if you hear your name, please step out to the pulpit. Sister Alice Talatu. Brother Okafo Chukuma. Sister Grace Glory. Brother Stanley Godson. You had your name. Quickly step out to the altar. The Lord bless you. If that hand is for Jesus, it can be better, it can be stronger. Sister Talatu. She told me out there that she comes all the way from Kefi to worship at the Glory Dome. And as at the last worship on her way home, she decided to cross while she alighted at Kefi. Cross to the other side to, to feed. While she was standing by the roadside, the Nepal pole that she was under cut into two without her knowledge. People started running and screaming. And all she realized was that she fell on the ground. And by the time she was up, she discovered she was not electrocuted. She came out on hot. And she could remember that in that service, the senior pastor was declaring against the spirit of death. And he has come, she has come to say, thank you, Jesus. Can we celebrate God? Give the Lord a big clap and a shout of praise. You shall not die before your time. And you shall not be a victim of sudden death in Jesus' name. Please, your name and your testimony. My name is Mr. Okafo Chukuma. Church, praise Jesus! Um, on Tuesday, I and my wife we were waiting for commanding the day because there was no light. Unknowingly to me, one of my children turned the tap on the one in the kitchen. So, to cut the long story short, we fell asleep. But later, my wife woke up around to 12. She, when she woke up, she now tapped me. But then I was sleeping. She now tapped me that something is burning. With that burning I heard, I jacked up and the, the place that my mind went was the kitchen. I rushed to the kitchen. On getting to the kitchen, the first step I will, I will put in I, I stepped into a water, a pool of water that is at my ankle level. Now, when I went for the tap, I turned it off. I was not trying to search for what was burning. I found out that the stabilizer where the fridge the refrigerator was plugged was what is burning in the water. Yes, was immersed in the water. Yes. So, and I began to, I wanted to pick it up. I now began to calculate. When I now came to Your consciousness. my consciousness, I realized this is electricity burning, and I'm still in it. That was when I now felt a little bit shock beneath my feet. Then I, I rushed out, and I said, for God to have rescued me from this electric shock, I came to say thank you. Another electrocution averted. In this season, the spirit of death will never locate you. Every agenda of hell to locate you with destruction. That agenda is frustrated and return back to hell. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Church, if they walk. If they walk, if they walk. I really want to appreciate God. When we enter dynamics, we are battered, chattered, and scattered. To the extent that my husband wasn't able to pay Nepal bill of 200 naira. The neighbor told him, you better go to the village and find out what is wrong with you. He said it's not going anywhere. To the extent that the sister came from village, said you should go to the village. He said it's not going anywhere. He always come to glory uh, area one. Then he wasn't able to pay house rentage of twenty thousand. 
Anytime the house was expired, I would go to land. I would be begging, 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 begging. I really want to appreciate God. As we enter Duna means God turns things around. My husband was un- that is unable to pay house rentage. He's the one that have houses here. They have three houses in Abuja. This one is tenant house. We have two tenant houses in Abuja. We have two housing, one in the village, four bedroom flats, the other one three bedroom flats. I don't want to take it for granted. And there's another land beside us here and where we are staying. We have been longing to purchase that because it's closer to our house and the tenant house. The woman that is in charge of that environment refused us to have access to the land since the past 10 years. As that they have been declaring uh, in uh, commanding the day that whatever that belongs to us will be put under pressure to locate us. That was exactly, exactly what happened. I was just in my house one day. One man knocked in our door, said, I want to see my husband. I said, what happened? He said, I want people to have this land. I want people to purchase this land. I said, just like that, the man connected us to the owner of the house, the land. We now bought the land. The land now belongs to us. That is the land that the person refused us to have access to. I really want to thank God. I said, God, may never be exalted in the mighty name of Jesus. House rent of 200 could not be paid. Nepa bill of 20 naira, something 200 naira could not be paid. Today it is houses, houses, houses. Somebody believe that God is going to change your story like that. Shout the loudest, amen. amen. And they also have houses for rent, rentage right now. They have one for tenants, long stretch of flat. Sir, and a, a land that was resisted over the years. Give the Lord a big clap and a louder shout of praise. God is changing somebody's story. Say amen. Amen. Your name and your testimony. Praise the Lord. My name is Stanley Godson. I was traveling to Benin City on Wednesday, being the 3rd of April. I was actually driving with three other people with me. In between Ukene and Okpela, we ran into the hands of kidnappers. I just looked up and I saw somebody coming up, jumping out from the bush. What I did was to slow the car. He was not trying to order me to park. I refused to move forward. Rather, I did a U-turn. On the process of noticing that I was not coming forth, all he did was to pull the trigger, but the trigger refused to cooperate. Yes, what, you, what, what he told me out there was at the face of that confrontation, he was very confident of where he was coming from because he heard from the mouth of the senior pastor that you cannot be wasted as a chicken. So with that, he had calmness and he confronted them with that faith. So before I could finish turning, they started raining bullets on the car. Not knowing that they've already spread their self both sides of the road and where I was turning back to but I didn't still stop. The two front tires were shot, but I didn't stop the car. They were shooting on the windscreen trying to get me. I, I wasn't scared, I was still driving. I know to a point that I had to go down low so that they could not get me. I was driving without seeing my front. To the glory of God, there was a checkpoint between where the thing was happening about 200 meters away. I drove the car to that point. And I've come to return all the glory because no crash, no crash. On me yes, and I think you 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 jump something there. Why are you the only one in the car? No, we have four of us. Okay. So the 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 bullet that touched the the tires and the vehicle was just confirmation of the efficacy of that bullet to prove that it was God that was in control because all the four of them no single scratch. They came out on hot. Can we put those hands together and give that all a shout? With a checkpoint that is 200 meters away that did not hear the sound of the bullets and they didn't hear anything. It is only God that saves us in this country and God will change our story. However long it takes, the story will change. However long it takes, the story will change. Amen. Stand up on your feet and let's give the Lord a praise. Almost three preservations this morning. Father, we give you the praise. 
and the car is still standing there looking handsome. This is when you drove back. Look at the car. I want them to see the. the, the I, I was expecting shattered windscreens, expecting all the things. All right. Oh my God. Lift your hands and let's appreciate the King of Kings. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless no you. No one connected, related, associated with this mantle shall be wasted like chicken. You will fulfill your days. The agenda of hell will never succeed in your life. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give you the praise and we give you the honor because you are faithful. Too faithful to fail. In Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord a praise. Please sit down. God's preservation is established in our nation and on our lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say a loud amen. amen. Praise the Lord. You are welcome to this Blessing Sunday today. And I believe that God's blessings will be unleashed upon you in the name of Jesus. I'll be summarizing the seeds of destiny this morning. It talks about your love and your character. We understand in Romans chapter 13 and in verse 8... All ye no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another has fulfilled the law. Praise the Lord. We understand today that your love flows into your character. Your character is in place when your love is intact. It has been established that there's a relationship between love and character. Love affects character. Your love flows into your character. The character that you have is in place when your love is intact. God's servant today talks about, you know, um, a lot of lovelessness in our land, in the, in, the, 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 in the society, in the environment. It says, for example, in higher institutions, a brilliant student is meant to compromise is made to repeat a class or something because uh, he or she refused to bribe a lecturer or to buy the lecturer's irrelevant and insignificant handouts or sleep with the lecturer if it were a girl with a male lecturer. And, you know, um, a, a, a young girl met, met us some time ago and uh, God's servant asked, what happened? And she said, sir, men are wicked. And when she was asked what happened, she said she was stranded looking for financial assistance. And every man that she approached for money also asked her for her body in exchange for that money. We are in such a society and in such a land that the evil has been ingrained into the system. This is lovelessness and characterlessness in a world that we live. And God's servant says his counsel today is to ask God to plant genuine love in your heart so that you can live right on the earth. Somebody say, I hear. Lift up your hands with me today as we pray together. Say, thank you, Lord, for showing me the way of character. I receive the grace to work on my love life so I can display positive character, oh Lord, in Jesus' name. We have three assignments today. Number one is to adjust your character by adjusting your love life. Number two is to let people see the practical love of God through your life by your quality and positive lifestyle. And thirdly, refuse to take advantage of anyone because they are vulnerable or in need. Praise the Lord. We'll proceed right away this morning. We'll be receiving the ministry of Dunami's voice. And they'll be ministering a medley of songs. These are all songs that have been received and written by God's servant, Dr. Pastor Paul Enenche. As a singer and minister, I believe you'll be blessed. Let's receive them with a clap offering as we proceed in the service.
Lift those hands higher and whisper the name Jesus. Amen. 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 Come on, come on, come on, 
Rolling out fears and rolling out tension. He does. I say, I will lift up my eyes from where is coming my help. My help coming from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that watches Israel will never sleep nor slumber. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade on your right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon smite thee by night. The Lord shall preserve thee. The Lord shall preserve your going in and your coming out from this day and forever. Shalash! Father, thank you for this visitation, for this assurance, for this turnaround. Thank you for the clearing out of that pain, of that pressure, of that affliction. Thank you for the turnaround for someone this morning. Jesus, because he's the owner of my life. In the morning you see me, I talk about Jesus. The meaning of that is that your life does not belong to the devil. Your life does not belong to the witch, the wizard. Your life does not belong to ancestral altars, the powers of hell and the powers of darkness. Your life belongs to your maker, your creator. Every day you see me, I talk about Jesus. He is the owner. He is the owner. He is the owner. He is the owner of my soul. He is the owner. He is the owner. He is the owner. Shout to the Lord. 
somebody else by your side said he is the owner of your soul Jehovah is the owner of your soul what I am saying right now may not mean anything to somebody but it means too much to somebody's life where there is a contention where it looks like God are you in charge of my life or it is the devil God is answering your question this morning he is the owner of your soul let me tell three people again around you tell them he is the owner of your life he is the owner of my soul he is the owner service already happened for someone and I say congratulations in Jesus precious name welcome to the blessing Sunday of the month of April above only by the power of the word and congratulations to everyone who has been drastically and massively impacted by the command in the day midnight prayers hallelujah hmm. today we are speaking on the subject the blessing of the word the blessing of the word. We are literally looking at just the subject, understanding the blessing of the word of God. Understanding the blessing of the word of God. Psalm 1 verse 1 all the way to verse 3. He said, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, the law, the word of the Lord. And in that word, in that law, does he meditate day and night. And it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Revelation chapter 1 and in verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. Very few things are important to note by way of introduction. Number one, that we serve a blessed God who is a God of blessing. We serve a blessed God who is a God of the blessing. There is nothing about God that is cursed. There is nothing about God that is not blessed. 
when you get true scriptures, you will keep on seeing, blessed be God. Blessed be God. Blessed said be God. No wonder in Genesis chapter 1 and in verse 28, and God blessed them. And God said, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And God blessed them. In Genesis chapter 1 and in verse 1, again, where we read, bless it back. It said, blessed is the man. That walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of his comfort, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. God bless them because God carries the blessing. A person can only give what he has. I believe this will be first, second Samuel chapter 22 and in verse 47. The Lord liveth and blessed be my rock. Talking about God. And exalted be the God of the rock of my salvation. We serve a blessed God who is a God of the blessing. Number two, the blessing of God is a mandate of creation. When God created man, he didn't create man with the curse. He created man with the blessing. The blessing of God is a mandate of creation. Genesis chapter 1 and in verse 28. And God blessed them. The blessing of God is a mandate of creation. Number three. To be connected to God. Is to be positioned for the blessing. To be connected to God in covenant. To be connected to God as a child of God. Is to be positioned for the blessing. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 9. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles. And their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them. That they are the seed which the Lord has blessed. All that see them shall acknowledge them. That they are the seed which the Lord has blessed. And finally by way of note number four. The blessing of God is packaged through his word. The blessing of God is packaged through his word. That is what we are here to, to, to experience today. Is packaged through his word. We saw already in Revelation chapter 1 and in verse 3. He said, blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy. And keep those things which are written therein. They read it. They hear it. They keep the things inside. No devil can stop them from being blessed. Somebody say a loud amen. amen. Somebody say a louder amen. amen. Making progress further. How does the word of God bring about the blessing of God? How does the word of God bring about the blessing of God? I have, I'm going to look at three things here and then three in the next service. Number one, true meditation on 
through meditation or meditating on the word. Through the process of meditation on the word. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 he said this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth but thou shalt meditate there in day and night that thou may observe to do according to all that is written therein for then shall thou make thy way prosperous and then shall thou have good success through meditating on the word through the process of meditation meditation is the process of thought transformation or the process of thought engagement thought engagement on a thought engagement with ideas or principles you engage the thought with ideas valuable ideas valuable principles the objective of meditation is mental transformation the aim of meditation is a change of mindset that is allow my word to change your mind you won't be stranded allow my word to change your thinking you won't be a failure this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate therein day and night observe to do what is written therein then you shall make your way prosperous and you shall have good success allow my word to change your way of thinking you can't be stranded the aim of meditation is the change of mindset number two through the revelation of the word through the revelation of the word We saw the life of Peter in Matthew chapter 16, verse 16 to verse 17. If you started from verse 13, you get the background. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippa, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, some said thou, that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, others Jeremiah's, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, but in your case, who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed art thou Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The moment Simon got to get a revelation of who the master was, and the master is the word, in the beginning was the word, the word was the God, that moment he shifted in the blessing. Blessed that thou. Every light of scripture changes your blessing level. Every light. To arrive at light is to be shifted in the blessing. The revelation of the world. Understanding the world. Insight in the world. Changes your blessing. Changes your level. Changes your blessing. Open my eyes to behold wondrous things out of your book. When your eyes open to behold such wondrous things, your level shifts. Some of this level is shifting today. If you are a believer, say loud, amen. 
Some of the most blessed people I know, blessing in all, all around. They are deep in what? Kenneth Hagin, Kenneth Copeland, Bishop David Oedipo. These people, this last line. Copeland and his wife, they eat word like food on a daily basis, not for preaching. That man has given out like 20 something aeroplanes. There you see stability of life. You are not talking of marital crisis, blessing all around. These are people married for 50 something years, close to 60 years without crisis. Hallelujah. Revelation of the word. True meditating in the word. Through the revelation of the word. And number three. True compliance. With divine instruction. True compliance. summary of that is true obedience. Everywhere there is an obedient man you will experience a faithful God. In Deuteronomy chapter 22 chapter 28 verse 1 all the way to verse 2 he said and it shall come to pass if, if, that, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set you on high above all nations on the earth. If you will obey, if you will obey, if you will agree to obey. And, and that obedience will provoke the, the death verse. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if you will hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. If you will obey. If you will obey. Isaiah chapter 48 and in verse 18 and 19. Isaiah 48, 18 and 19. He said, Oh that thou hast hearkened to my commandments. Then will your peace have been as a river and your righteousness as the waves of the sea. What's happening? I'm looking to the next verse. 19 shifted backward. Thy seed also would have been as the sand and your offspring as the of thy bowels like the gravel thereof. I would have exploded you, expanded you if only you hearkened to the voice of the Lord your God. You travel into the world of the blessing in the vehicle of obedience. Say it again. You travel into the world of the blessing in the vehicle of obedience. Disobedience is foundation for dryness. Psalm 68 verse 6. God sets the solitary in families. He bringeth out those which are bound with chains. But the rebellious dwell in a dry land. Rebellion. Disobedience. Is foundation for dryness. A young man saw me the other day in the office. He said I picked him up in a real one church. And when he described what, what I said and how I picked him up, he denied the Jew. I remembered. And I said, You haven't family background, terrible, all, all manner of things. You are struggling for this and that. You're asking God, why, Lord? And, and he was, I think he was speaking in tongues, and I was hearing what he was saying. And I translated it to him right there. I said, God is about to change your story. Be faithful, be committed. Be faithful, be committed. 
He said God changed his story. But he was not faithful. That came to him verbatim there. God is changing your story. Just ensure that you do what you are meant to do. He came with his wife. His wife said, me I'm faithful though, but he, no. God changed his life from his family. Businesses came, money came, millions came. Ordina as ordinary as it is to honor God with what is his, he couldn't. Until he knows dive back and then stepped into the negative. Depth. Everywhere you see struggle, there is rebellion around the corner. Listen to this. Either there is an instruction you are not aware you need to obey or there is an instruction you know you fail to obey. Every time, every time. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me for as long as he is the one leading me. I must walk in beside still waters. If he's the one leading me, I must lie down in green pastures. Somebody say a loud amen. Very, very briefly before we step forward this morning, what are those things that I need to obey? What are scriptural injunctions whose obedience will bring about the blessing? Number one, upright living. Living uprightly. Not living crookedly. Upright living. Psalm 5 and in verse 12. We read it already. For thou, Lord, will bless the, the righteous, the upright, not the unrighteous, not the ungodly. With favor will you compass him as with a shield. Obey that instruction. And then we already read Psalm 1, verse 1 to verse 3. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of his comfort. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. And it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall be prosper. Upright living. Uprightness is the way of blessedness. Living with a conscience that is tidy. Tidy. A conscience that is tidy, that is clear, clean. Living with the consciousness that there is a God in heaven who watches. Upright living. I heard the story of a man. He was made big by God. For as long as he was little, he stood in the church as usher. He did everything. He was correct. He was just doing everything. The kind of person that hangs around his pastor all the time. And is just there. Protocol or something. So he became a billionaire. Millionaire, billionaire. Has plane. His own plane. Then he began to stray. And to stray. To become more acceptable to social life. To the club of people that are in such realm. Began to stray. Began to stray. Women. Even no cult. He told his wife, can you just agree to die? Anything you want, I will give you if you will agree to die. 
Wife said, if I die, all the things you will give me, what will I do with it? That man dropped from up like that. All the way down. All the way down. Crashed. Now struggling to locate commercial flight. It is possible for man to mock man, but you can't mock God. If you forget the God who made you, you forfeit your making. Upright living. Anything God cannot give you, you don't need. Where God can't take you, don't go. Upright living means the avoidance of crooked dealings. Crooked dealings. Crooked financial dealings. No matter how, how attractive it looks or sounds, you say, this type of business is not for me. This is not the kind of business I'm looking for. Upright living. Number two is kingdom service. You shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless your bread and your water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. There shall nothing cast their young nor be barren in thy land. The number of your days I will fulfill. You shall serve the Lord your God. And he shall bless. God is not a user of people. He is a, a raiser of people. God is not looking for who to use. He's looking for who to raise. When Jesus came to talk to Peter. While they were fishing. He said follow me. And I will make you. I will make you. God is not looking for who to mock. He's looking for who to make. Is God speaking to somebody? Say loud, amen. amen. He's looking for who to make. When some of us began to squander our youth on God, some people thought we're wasting our time, wasting our lives. While others were night clubbing or doing this or that, you just at a very young age, eleven, three days dry fasting at age eleven. Stray like little children will stray. And then return back full blast. Age 18. And has been on the journey. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is where the waste brought us. Kingdom service. What I, what I plead with people is. If you use all your energy in this world. To live for yourself. What will you tell God when you meet him? That is the energy of your life. It is good to try to attempt to serve God when you are 85. But the energy left at that time is minimal. God places premium value on youthful energy. Not that you should regret if you don't repent on time. But when you are able any, anywhere you, 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 God meets you, donate him your life. You won't regret it. One young lady met me and she said, I have kept myself all these years. Secondary school, I didn't do anything. Graduated, went to university, I didn't do anything. I am clean. No man. Yet all those who were just rough girls. They are married now. Some have children. Does it mean I'm wasting my time? I said, no. You didn't waste your time. Look at me. I didn't waste my time. Look at my wife. We also followed God from early. God will change your story. And I gave her a prophetic word. 
Rapidly, God located her. Rapidly, she got married. Rapidly, she traveled with her husband to five countries within one week. God is not looking for who to use. Determined not to live your life for yourself. To live for self is to live for less. When, but when you live beyond yourself, you live beyond your time. Somebody say it loud, amen. Somebody say it loud, amen. Somebody say it loud, amen. When we were growing up, donated ourselves to God in the university days. One young man said, they are saying Jesus is the answer. What is the question? He laughed. He laughed about everything. He just so sarcastic. The question is the question of eternity. The question is the question of life on earth. That man wasted his life, drunk his life, till his fifties, expired out of this world. Nothing. No wife. Nothing. Hallelujah. Lift your right hand and say, Father, I will waste my life on you again and again. I'll waste my life on you again and again. Thank you, Lord. God is a rewarder. He doesn't, he's not looking for who to use. He's looking for who to raise. And you begin that with soul winning assignment. Your friends, your loved ones, your neighbor, your classmate, your I have my classmates will be worshiping with me in the second service this morning. That is secondary school. And is will be in service together. I'll be ministering to them at the end of the service for those who are not yet born again. I have two classmates. One has been is a minister in this commission and has been here for 25, 26 years. It's one of the first fruits of this altar. Another one is they are almost 25 years. All those who know you, all those who are connected to you, in what way have you served God by impacting their lives? It's a determinant of what God can do with your life. Listen, there is nothing we have in this world that will go down with us. The only thing that will go with us into eternity is the mark we have made. The mark we have made. The mark we have made. The mark we have made for eternity. Don't waste your life. Ensure that your life counts for eternal purpose. Kingdom service number three is honoring God with our resources. Living uprightly, living in kingdom service, honoring God with our resources. Proverbs 3, 9 to 10, it said, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. He said, Then so shall thy bands be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Your bands will be filled with plenty. Your presses will burst out with new wine. It says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse. The tithe is not a doctrine of a church. It's not an Old Testament law. It existed. It's not even the, the, an issue of the law of Moses. It's predated them. It is coming before God and say, you are the owner of my life and the owner of all that I have. Out of all that you are giving me continually. I can actually tell you, that tithe is minimum. That's, that 10% is the minimum that anybody can do. Some of us left that realm that is called tithe longest time. I traveled to America some time ago. What came my way? I believe that all of it went back to God. 
There was a time something came my way. Plenty zeros in foreign currency. What happened? That, it was, that wasn't tight. That was literally 100%. It went all the way back. Can be, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can put pressure on kindergartens on the matter of tight. But really matured people, you are way beyond that. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody say the loudest amen. Somebody told me this year that he wants to give like a billion this year towards evangelism and 250 per quarter. And he said, I have told God, just see me. Million per quarter. 250 million naira per quarter. For, for crusade work. You see, I have told God. What, what do I need money for? Give it to me. And prove me. And God has given him and he proved God and severally. Fading away like the stars of the morning. Losing their light in the glorious sun. Doors must we pass from this earth and his toiling. Only remembered for what we have done. What we deposit we made in eternity is what will count. Houses we built on earth will not count. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody shout the loud most amen. And so, if you are able and you are determined to honor God, able and determined, Lord, I am going to honor you with my life. I am going to honor you with my resources. I am going to honor you with my substance. Beloved, you won't be able to escape the blessing that come, will come your way. Number four is being a blessing to the world. And I put a clause, especially the less privileged. Being a blessing to your world, especially the less privileged. God told Abraham, he said, I'll bless you and you shall be a blessing. Genesis 12, 2 to 3. He said, and I'll make of thee a great nation and I'll bless thee and make thy name great and thou shall be a blessing. I'll bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Somebody say a loud amen. God is only going to bless blessers. People who are willing to be blessings to their generation. They are the ones that can attract the blessing of God. In Proverbs chapter 22 verse 9, scripture that is well known to us, Proverbs 22 and in verse 9, he said, he that has a bountiful eye shall be blessed. That is, the generous man shall be blessed. Why? Because he giveth his bread to the poor. Make the poor a part of your shadow. Being a blessing to your world, especially the less privileged. Proverbs chapter 21 verse 13. Whoso stoppeth his ears at the cry of the poor, he also shall cry himself, but shall not be heard. The poor is not a disturbance, it's an opportunity. The less privileged, they are not a disturbance. Being a blessing to your world, it, that includes being a blessing to everyone that is coming your especially the household of faith. Now we are doing food ministration every Sunday, every Sunday. I don't know if they have a clip of last Sunday. Every single Sunday to people who are unable to know what to go and eat at home, especially in this economy. Every Sunday. That's an opportunity to say, church, 
This is my contribution to this feeding every Sunday. This is my part. This is my seed. This is my blessing. Hallelujah. When we went for Kaduna Crusade, you saw the massive crowd there. Not a dime of offering was taken on that crusade ground. The food distribution was done at the church premises. Food distribution was done on the campus for the students. Deputy Vice Chancellor was elated. Confessed that she joined <laughs> commanding the day midnight prayer as well. It's a new day for somebody. Stretch out your two hands. I declare today, season of scarcity and season of shortage is over in your life forever. Season of scarcity, season of shortage is over in your life forever. The Lord empower you. To fulfill his purpose. In Jesus precious name. Finally. Is walking in faithfulness. That is. Faithful to God. Faithful in your commitment to the assembly. Faithful. As a father. Faithful to your family. Faithful to your place of work. Not that they are paying you salary and you're not, you are not doing the work for which you are being paid. Being, being of a reliable character. Proverbs chapter 28 and in verse 20. The Bible said, The faithful man shall abound with blessings, but he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. The, a faithful man shall abound with blessings, but he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. Hallelujah. Are you faithful? Are you reliable? Like Joseph, where Potiphar kept everything under his hand and nothing was missing? When was the last time you had a transaction and everything was safe under your custody? It will determine the blessing of the Lord. Hallelujah. Living uprightly, living in kingdom service, honoring God with your resources, being a blessing to your world, your world generally. There is a dimension of this that we don't talk about for the sake of misunderstanding. But when you bless the blessed, when you bless a carrier of the blessing, a carrier of oil, a carrier of grace, God told Abraham, I will bless him who bless you. I have already blessed you. But anybody blessing you that is adding to your success, I will add to his success. And I will curse him. I learned that 20 something years ago. I see the massiveness of God's hand and oil on my father in the Lord. And I release the blessing connect it on a monthly basis for 20 something donkey years. It works like fire. We don't talk about it so that people don't say he's looking for what I have. Hallelujah. <laughs> Being a blessing to your world, especially the less privileged. Finally, walking in faithfulness. It's a new day for somebody. If you are that somebody, you will say louder, amen. amen. If you are that somebody, you will say louder, amen. amen. If you are that somebody, you stand on your feet with the loudest shout of amen. amen. Loud most shout of amen. amen. Are you blessed this morning or not? Can you lift up your hands and begin to appreciate the King of Kings? Appreciate the Lord of Lords. Honor him, worship him, glorify him for what you have received this morning. Let 
Let's begin. I need somebody on the microphone. Lift up your voice. Let's begin like this. Lift your hands and say, Father. Father. Thank you. Thank you. For your word. For your word. To me. To me. This morning. This morning. I am grateful for the release of your word. Thank you, Master. Be glorified, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Speak to God. In Jesus precious name Lift up your hands and say after me We are going to pray this actions one by one lift your hands and say father father i receive the grace, receive the grace to live to live uprightly upright deliver me lord, deliver me, lord. From, every life from every life of crookedness, of crookedness. in the name of jesus name go ahead open your mouth and pray i receive the grace for upright living i receive deliverance from crooked living i receive the grace for upright living I receive deliverance from crooked living. In the name of Jesus. I receive the grace for upright living. I receive deliverance from crooked living. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Lift your hands and say after me, says, Father, Father, I receive the grace, receive the grace for kingdom service. In the name of Jesus. I receive that grace for kingdom service. I receive it now in the name of Jesus. Help me Lord not to waste my life pursuing the ordinary things of this life. The grace to serve you in this kingdom. I receive it now. Lift your hands and lift your voice and pray. in the name of Jesus Lift your hands and lift your voice and say, Father, Father I, receive the grace I receive the grace to honor you, to honor you with, my with my resources. To honor you, honor you with my life. my life. To honor you, honor you with my resources. my resources. I receive that grace. Receive that grace. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Grace to honor you. To honor you. To honor you, Lord. To honor you, God. In the name of Jesus, Amen. lift your hands again and say after me and say, Father, Father, I receive the grace, receive the grace to be a blessing Jesus. to my world, especially the less privileged. I receive that grace to be a blessing to my world. I receive it now. Go ahead, open your mouth and pray. In Jesus' precious name. And finally, Lord, grace to be faithful, grace to be reliable, grace to be dependable. I have received it. Would you lift your voice and your hands and say after me, say, Father, grace to be faithful, grace to be reliable, grace to be dependable. I receive it now. Go ahead, open your mouth and pray. I receive the grace. Grace to be faithful, grace to be dependable, grace to be reliable. I 
I receive that grace. In the name of Jesus, the Lord has heard and answered us. In Jesus' name. Take your seat one minute. I have two clips I'll show you very quickly. Of We showed it at the Commander Day Midnight Prayer last night. But in case you didn't watch, testimonies of people that God impacted from this prayer altar. Can you go ahead and give us the first clip and second? And then we shall stand and pray and ask God for his visitation this morning. And then take the communion and receive the blessing. Can you do that now, Sha? Above only, that's my place. My name is Martha Begumia from Uganda. I'm very grateful to God for this Commanding the Day platform. Um, I've been able to receive answers for two requests that have been tabling. Number one is about restoration of my mother's health. She's been in hospital for two months because of stroke, paralysis, and hypertension. But I'm so grateful to God that last week she sat on her own. She's able to feed, she's able to sing, and I know any time from now she'll be walking and she'll be back again, back, back to her normal self. The other thing I want to thank God for is restoration of communication with my husband who we've been separated for 10 years. I'm so grateful to God that he can now send me messages which are respectful and send money for the welfare of the children. And I'm so grateful to God because it seems that he's restoring my marriage. I thank God so much for Pastor Becky, for Morita. Pastor Paul and Enche. What sort of sacrifice is this that you've given to the world? May the Lord remember you. May the Lord bless you forever for us. Thank you very much. God bless you. Bye-bye. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for what he has done for me through this commanding the day midnight prayer. I was introduced by my friend and ever since then I have been connecting. On the 2nd of December, I woke up one faithful morning to Ben and I felt the sharpening down my lower back and I thought it was a normal thing, not until it became severe that I was almost crippled. I couldn't walk, I couldn't sit, I couldn't stand, I couldn't even lie down. And each time I wake up in the morning, this pain is as if I have one heavy stuff around my waist, so heavy that I'll be feeling what, I'll be asking myself what is going on. And so I went to the hospital for a series of scan, x-ray was carried out, and when the results came out, the doctor said that the result says there's no cure. I'm going to attach the result here and the drugs I have been taking. He no said cure. the result said there's no cure, that I have muscle spasm, and I'll be managing it. And then I told him, how can I be managing this pain when I can't even do anything with it? And my life is, I feel like my life is something like, I don't want to say it, I felt like my life was ending and so I told him that I, I know only one way to heal myself and each time people call me inviting me for programs I told them no I know where I am connected to I cannot be connected to this altar and then something like this is happening to me people are coming here testifying and what about me and so on the 27th of Feb uh, March sorry I came for the program I wasn't it was just a shock to me that there was a program going on so that friday i said to myself i cannot miss it as jesus christ was nailed on the cross so will my pain muscle spasm i don't know what it is it's, it's going to going to nail, be nailed on the cross and so that friday i came while papa was making the declarations he asked us to close our eyes and he was making the declaration and then he mentioned that lower back pain and i screamed amen immediately i felt i have never experienced such a miracle before Immediately, I, I, I felt something like something was moving, like losing, and the pain was as if I've been tied for so long. I, I started shouting, Jesus, Jesus. 
and immediately I felt chills like ice water down there and then I said to myself could this be my turn like this is my miracle I want to believe I'm healed and ever since that Friday I have never felt this before started since December last year up until Friday 27th of March I have been in pains but ever since that Friday night breaking Saturday my life has never been the same I am totally healed these are the drugs I have been taking Papa said some healings are gradual and I believe that God the God that started this good work in me is going to heal my sister of fibroid and going to totally heal us from all this sickness that we don't know where it comes from thank you very much sir thank you ma for allowing God to use you for someone like me I don't know my life I just want to say thank you thank you Jesus for healing me thank you stand up on your feet everybody paraspinal muscle spasm lift up your two hands and begin to receive what God has in store for you this morning Lord I am here for my own blessing I am here for your visitation of my life lift up your two hands lift up your voice and begin to receive Father, thank you for visiting that man, for visiting someone here, changing somebody's story. Lift your hands out. Thank you for lifting the burden of that man. Thank you for that impartation. Thank you for that change of story. What God has in store for you this morning, 
It's coming your way right now. Oh Lord, it's your turn. I see cancers going, ancestral curse, generational curse, occultic powers broken. Above all, I see fresh fire, fresh impartation of grace and fire to serve God with faithfulness and commitment like never before. Lift your hands high. Father, let the fire fall. When I say in the name of Jesus, one, two, three, you scream, I receive, and place the hands on yourself. It all comes from in fire. Oh Lord. Father, let the fire fall. Let the fire fall. Let the fire fall. Let the power fall. Let the blessing fall. Let it turn around and happen. Right now at the count of three, I see mountains disappearing. Pains disappearing, afflictions going. Now in the name of Jesus, when I say one, two, three, you scream, I receive. And you receive the blessing and receive what God has in store for you this morning. In the name of Jesus, one, two, and three. Receive, 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 receive. And I will worship you. We all of us pray. Hey, Father, thank you because it is done. Amen. Thank you because the yoke is broken. Amen. Thank you because the chain is broken. Somebody left me is healed by the power of God. Somebody's neck condition is healed. An unclean spirit is just left. Spirits of impersonation, spirit of death. Thank you, Father. Give the Lord the praise. Take your seat. If something happened to you in that manner, come forward and let's find out what happened to you. Quickly, something happened to you after that manner. Something touches you just now. In the name of Jesus. Well, we receive those who are coming forward. Commanding the day, midnight prayer tonight is our season of fruitfulness. Embargoes will be dissolved and this month too. In the precious name of Jesus. Tomorrow, we have the Sons of the Prophets meeting from all across the country, all across the world. I can see some are already here tonight, today. From, by 11 a.m. Um, it's more like the impartation for the year, even though we're in the second quarter, but we're going to recover all for the year. Um, some of our pastors, one of our pastors asked me from a location and he said that the uh, arrangement has been made for central for broadcast from that location if he is permitted to come. I said, why not? Um, those who cannot come from the locations, that is the sons of the prophets who can't come, they will be viewing at the viewing centers of our locations. And pastors who are interested in coming, especially regional pastors, these pastors, um, are welcome to come. It's 11 a.m. All the way till God is through with us. It's going to be a full day on Monday because by 5.30 p.m., the same Monday, we have the kingdom financial stewards. Give the Lord a big clap of hand. I just told you of someone who said um, he's going to give one BN for the year. 250 million per quarter. He was hanging around the realm for a while and then sat in the church one day and said, Lord, I've been in this realm for this while. Midweek service. What do I move to, to, to go to the nine zero range? And right in the course of the service, fire landed according to his word. And it shifted 
and couldn't drop from there. Somebody say a loud amen. Listen to me. This is a, a forum where those who believe that God has a plan of committing his resources into their hands as millionaires, multi-millionaires, billionaires for the sake of the end time harvest. You believe that that is your calling and that is where you belong. It's an impartation session, teaching session, instruction session that can shift you to that realm. It's holding by 5.30 p.m. Are we holding at the event center, right? At the event center, right there. We have cards also. You can inform your friends and your loved ones. And going forward, all locations can be connected. It's not just going to be um, a headquarters affair. Everyone in all locations, in all our locations, globally, you can be connected at the same time to receive the same instruction to kingdom financial stewards. But we have people who fly in from Lagos, from Wari, from different places to come and attend in Abuja and go back. And you are also welcome. I sense that the way God is using this ministry to raise ministers of the gospel. He's also using this ministry to raise people in financial apostleship, financial authority. And you will never be left behind. Say a loud amen. Give the Lord the praise. Give the Lord a big clap and a louder shout of praise. And this is the week of the glory conference in the United Kingdom. Anybody ready and set for that? Shout the Lord and say amen. Rush in and register. We have just a few more days to go. And the Wembley Arena is already warming up and boiling. And we trust the Lord. London buses literally branded. Billboards everywhere. And that's the rally all all other place. And we trust God that United Kingdom and Europe shall receive an evangelization and an and a visitation like never before. If God is leading you to be a part of this crusade in one form or the other, you can be a part of it. Even if you can't go physically, you can go with your seed and go with your giving. And the Lord bless you in Jesus' precious name. While we take this testimony briefly, the um communion stewards can quickly rush and then go ahead and pass go ahead with the communion and then we shall receive the call of the altar please do that quickly that's right this is mystery versus mystery our brother said he was on evangelism at one of the neighboring towns after the evangelism a woman confronted him in the dream for rescuing the people and said he was going to deal with him. For four days, he has not been breathing well. But when he entered this sanctuary this morning and he began to release fire, the mystery from this altar attacked that mystery. Now it returns back to hell. Lift your hands. Every arrow fired into anyone here. Back to sender. Back to sender. Back to sender. In the name of Jesus, yes. Our sister said, why? The ministration was on. She saw herself and her family member being pulled out of a pit. Out of a pit this morning. Is anybody else trusting God to be pulled out of the pit? Every pit where the devil kept you and your family members. I declare you out in the name of Jesus. Yes. Now, by the time we are through with the communion, I mean, with, with the testimonies, we should also, also have been through with the communion. Please do that rapidly. Yes, sir. Beloved brother, he, on the 17th of last month, he said he sat down and he fed an arrow, hit him on the left ear and that left partial deafness right there before he knew it began to move into the right ear now the left ear got blocked completely wasn't hearing anything in that condition so he came into the service but right now at the scream of i receive the power of god came upon him and that ear popped open on this body he's hearing perfectly now congratulations again evil arrow return back to send us in jesus name yes sir i'm wondering the lord will describe this better She's, she's coming. University, university students. Thank you, sir. University students. English, right? English and literary, literary studies. And three, uh, six months ago, she came down with schizophrenia. Take off your scarf. Let's see the way she came out. That's how she came out. Came out with mental condition. Schizophrenia. She couldn't sit in one place, stand for long, restless, restless. aggressive, 
violent, aimless wandering. Run out of the house 1 a.m., 2 a.m. Oh, no. I asked my mom to bring her 300 the level met, I mean, students in the university. And what happened today? So, her daddy was praying. She said she felt God touch her. Oh. When you say we should come out, so I have to follow her. Congratulations, come. She started praying along. Lift up your hands. And come. Father, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over this devil of schizophrenia. Thus far, you have afflicted. Go! Out to hell and return back no more. I decree that you return back to your school and continue schooling in Jesus' name. Yes. So, young man, um, playing football four years ago, he said, and had um, fracture. Well, some some the lateral malleolus and then the um, knee joints. The synovia fluid things all manner of things happening there he could barely walk with it with excruciating pains he came in this morning power of god hit him and the knees are free and the legs are free do what you couldn't do before you couldn't bend down like that father thank you because it is over in jesus name finally Breast condition just healed, right breast pain, excruciating, came in with it this morning, and God took it away. Lift your hands in Jesus' name. Freedom! I prophesy today, every mountain in your life is uprooted, return to hell. In Jesus' name, yes. Hallelujah. Sir, on, our brother was on his way to the church, and he said, something like cobweb fell from the tree. And entered into the eye. And right from that spot, he couldn't see anything with that right eye. Devil is a bastard. So when, she, when he got to the church after I received, he said the thing was burnt off. He can see clearly now. In so Jesus' name, every arrow sent from hell for you is and, over. And for the, past six, for the past six months, he couldn't turn the neck. Now, everything that is... That is demonic arrows yes, all sent back to hell. What happened? Tell us about it. Yes, sir. Our beloved sister here came with her daughter. She said they were Sorry. with the son, please. They were in the hospital, sir. This uh, baby here was diagnosed of uh, sepsis and also meningitis. And the uh, what again you said, a couple of bundle of afflictions. And this child here was on oxygen right there in the hospital until on the 28th of last month when the word of prophecy came during the commanded the day that there is a baby whose name is David specifically mentioned who is currently on oxygen in the hospital, under the next three days, you, are, you will be discharged and the oxygen will be removed. Sir, it didn't last for three days. The same day, sir, when they checked the oxygen pressure of the baby, the breath was normalized and the oxygen tubes were removed from his nostrils and right now the baby was discharged on the 29th. The following day, discharged from the hospital and they are here to give glory to God, sir. Father, thank you. For completing the miracle and straightening out the neck in the name of jesus we like to get the clip of that day where his name was mentioned and that he was on oxygen gallbladder stone right parenchyma disease is cancelled from meningitis to God that has turned that devil is a liar. He is healed in Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord a big clap of hand. Unquestionable, you are the Lord. Unquestionable, you are the Lord. Unquestionable, 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 you are the Lord. Unquestionable, unquestionable, you are the Lord. Unquestionable, you are the Lord. Unquestionable. Somebody say loud amen. Please, those who are coming in now late, so late for this first service, you are encouraged to wait for the second service. Members are encouraged to increase the media traffic and visibility of the command day by using the hashtag on their personal decent posts and pictures, etc. on all social media. They can also take a picture of themselves watching the command the day. And post it using the hashtag, hashtag commanding the day midnight prayer, commanding the day, and then midnight prayers. Ensure that you get that done, and so that when somebody is trying to look for midnight prayers, it will take him straight.
tool. They command the day. It's an evangelistic tool. It's a revival platform. And we trust that lives will never remain the same. Online foundation class is on. Sure. Ensure that you are a part of it. The skill acquisition we announced the other day is also still on. God bless you. Now, have we all received the communion? Is there anybody who doesn't have yet? All right, which means we are all set. Can we all stand up on, on our feet to the communion, getting ready for the blessing? We are doing a stickers campaign. Some years ago, a young lady came to Abuja City and she said almost every car she saw was carrying a dunamis sticker. And she said, what is dunamis? Is it a soft drink? She came to do youth service. So on one of the days, she followed one of the cars to where it was going on Sunday and arrived at Dynamis Church in area one. That was how she gave her life to Christ. So this is evangelistic in its own right. It's also a territorial command and control that the mantle of God through this commission is in this territory dominant. And so this is being pasted on cars. And if you go outside, you might see it pasted. This is so expensive that it's not something we're going to distribute to people hand by hand right now. By the time we paste one on your car and you need one, you go buy the other one. Right? Or you go and buy as many as you want. This will be done today. In all locations, please do that. Um, I'm sure that the devil is aware of this sticker as well. If robbers can come on a door and say, oh no, we cannot rob here. Because they saw this on the door. And all manner of demonic. You remember the story of a, an occult, a, a bed that flew into the room of somebody. And then hit something like this on the, on the wall and fell. Out. It started burning from the wall. From where it hit it. And burned the rug. A hole on the rug. A, a evil bed. So this is released as mantle. Upon your car where it is pasted. And we declare a complete, total change of story. Somebody say a loud amen. amen. Somebody say a loud amen. amen. Somebody shout the Lord must say amen. amen. That is the welfare distribution for last Sunday. And I'm sure also for this Sunday. That is already arranged. Hallelujah. Lift up your... The communion oh, offering. We cannot talk of the, of the blessing without taking the offering. Both offering and the other call. Yeah. Stretch your two hands in front of you. I prophesy upon your hands. I declare the release of harvest from the north, the south, and the east, and the west. In Jesus' name. Please take your seat and pick up your offerings well. Tidy it up very well. Friends, Father, multiply the harvest of every giver. Let the hands lifted never drop to beg. In the name of Jesus, from every side, multiplied harvest. In Jesus' name, Amen. Pass on the offerings very quickly. For a category of people here, your highest giving is the giving of your own life to God. Your money is not what interests God. Your very life. Will you stand up on your feet anywhere you are? in need of surrender to Jesus 
forgiveness for your sins i have heard the message today i have been living for my myself i want to start living for god right now stand up on your feet carry your bibles carry your bags and rush to the front quickly i'll give you just calm down calm down calm down the instrument at the count of 15 you carry your bibles and you carry your bags and quickly rush to the front right now you want to give your life to christ you want your sins forgiven you want today to mark a new day on your life in your life that's right god bless you you want you want a lifestyle broken a lifestyle change smoking drinking womanizing masturbation lesbianism lying cheating fraud gambling anything that is not good for you and you want to be free of it stand up on your feet right now and rush to the front here as i give you the count of 15. one two while they are coming the rest of us can stand up on our feet with your communion in your hand and ready for the blessing goodbye 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 one goodbye one two three four five six seven eight nine ten I know you know you know who because 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 of you someday I've got my mind made up and I will talk about because I want to see my Jesus keep coming keep coming keep coming I see another count I'll give another count of 10 for everyone here today please let the movement be limited those coming in for service just hold on please us just we need order we haven't taken the communion yet please please I'll give another count of 10 for those who are rededicating their lives to Jesus you have come out like this before but you want to do it again I'll give you another count of 10 let's go one two three four Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Excellent. Place your hand on your chest. If you are still coming on the way, please come very fast. And if you are, you can actually start your praying from the from the from the way where you are coming. And pray. Place your hand on your chest and pray after me. Say, Lord Jesus. Say it louder, Lord Jesus. I am a sinner in need of your help. Come into my life. Make me a new person. Today, I have decided to follow you, Lord. No turning back. From today forward ever backward never from today it is my decision to live for you to do your will to fulfill your purpose help me lord to do your will to live for you to fulfill your purpose in jesus name amen i pray for you today i declare the hold of sin broken grace to live for god be released upon you in jesus precious name amen Counselors, I'm sure we can hold on and receive the blessing, right? What do you? Yeah, because even the place are a bit congested. All right. While we are doing that, you are here today for the first time. Please join us forward so we do this at the same time. Also, you want to be a full member of Dynamics Church. You've been coming, but you haven't become a member yet. Also, quickly come forward and join us. God bless you. Now, lift up your communion, everyone. Place your right hand on your head or the whichever hand and then receive the blessing right now. Those coming forward who ask new members or newcomers, please keep coming while the prayer is on. Please, this announcement is very important. 
If you came in for second service, wait for the second service. That will be starting shortly. If you came late for the first service, don't rush without hearing that message. It was too impactful. God bless you. We pray for you today in the name of Jesus. This month of April, this month of April, we declare the release of the blessing of God upon your lives in the name of Jesus. In this month, we declare there shall be an outpouring of marital blessings, marital establishment, marital harmony, the blessings of the fruit of the womb, the blessings of the fruit of your hands. Your works are blessed. You are blessed in your going out, blessed in your coming in, blessed in what you lay your hands to do in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you right now. I decree today that every single limitation and embargo placed on your life be lifted in the name of Jesus. Amen. I decree the release of your life's potentials today in the name of Jesus. Amen. I decree today the trigger for a new beginning in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. I declare the release of the blessing of supernatural supplies. Amen. The blessing of divine health. Amen. The blessing of divine direction. Amen. The blessing of divine preservation. Amen. The blessing of peace. Amen. I decree the blessing of destiny opening. Amen. I prophesy the blessing of life. Amen. You shall fulfill your days. Amen. You cannot be cautious before your time. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, give us a testimony. Change the life and the story of somebody. Thank you because it is done. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. This communion is called the cup of the blessing. As we take the cup of the blessing today, we declare the curses of life flushed out of the system. Amen. In the name of the Father. And of the Son Amen. and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and take that communion right now. This week shall be the best week of your life. This first quarter, you shall see drastic results. Lift up your two hands and receive the blessing. As you live here today, as you step into the month of April, the Lord bless you. Adonai keep you. El Shaddai make his face to shine upon you the Lord bless you I am that I am keep you Adonai make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you and be gracious unto you the Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace in everything you do I say the Lord bless you bless you bless you bless you and keep you oh Adonai make his face to shine off on you oh and be gracious unto you and be and be and be gracious unto you the Lord lift up he Countenance on you and give and give you peace. 
the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace in the name of Jesus God bless you 2024 and above only where is your place and above only God bless you shake hands with three people see you at the midweek service see you on the healing and deliverance service as we deal on the subjects of the word in this month and next Sunday is an anointing service as we receive the oil that moves us into the depths of his mercy go forward and see you god bless you can you kindly hold on on this bringing this up too late god bless you counsel us when you are set to move with them, you can feel free. Right, you can go ahead. Yes, celebration. Do I have Lord in myself? What can I do, Lord?
Is somebody glad to be in God's presence this morning? Rise up on your feet with a shout of hallelujah. The psalmist says, Give thanks unto the Lord for he is good, for his mercies endure it forever. Open your mouth and give God all the praise. Appreciate him for his goodness, give him all the glory. Worship him, give him praise, give him honor, give him adoration. Father, we thank you, we give you all the glory. Thank you, mighty God, for all you have done in our lives. Lord, we give you all the praise for all you did and wrote in the first service. Thank you, Lord, for the release of your word. Thank Thank you mighty father for the miracle signs and wonders we know that god you are set to do something better even in this service lord in retrospect of all we saw you did even in the first service lord your name alone be glorified in the name of jesus we pray they said if i regard iniquity in my heart the lord will not hear me open your mouth and ask god for the forgiveness of sins oh lord whatsoever it is that will stop me from receiving all you have calculated and packaged for my life lord even in this second service oh god i ask for your mercy oh lord in the name of jesus christ he said now the lord is that spirit and anywhere the spirit is there's liberty father we make demand on the release of your manifest presence that manifest presence that brings about manifestation of your power oh lord let it be released lord even in this service in the name of jesus we pray genesis chapter 1 verse number 28 the bible says and God blessed them whenever the blessing comes upon the life of a man the causes become useless father I ask of God for the release of your blessing bless me Lord oh God indeed even in this service that blessing that will cause my life to wonder let that blessing of God be released upon my life in the name of Jesus father we ask for the fresh release of your hand upon the life of your servant oh God touch him afresh oh God get him ready even for the sake of this second service Lord in the name of Jesus father we give you all the prayer lift up your voice appreciate him for answers to prayers father we have come to say thank you again and again and again and again Jesus we give you all the praise blessed be your name oh God in the name of Jesus we pray can we give the Lord a big hand for answers to prayers give him all the praise and back it up with the shout of hallelujah glory to God without that I believe we have got plenty of testifiers in God's presence here this morning the minister of God is at the entrance of the glory gate go register your name with him I'll be given the privilege to testify in a short while from now with Jesus Christ they receive the praise team as they take us further in this service Somebody give Jesus a shout of praise. Who did that? Somebody shout. Let's go, say, say. As I think about that, as I think about that. Get us probably to this point. Hey, hey. I am full of my soul. I show us come as me. Hey, hey. So I'm come to us. Yeah. 
Somebody. Somebody give the Lord a big, big hand of praise. Hallelujah. Please, you may have your seats as kings and queens in his presence. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a big hand. It's testimony time. Please, if you hear your name, you rush out quickly to come share your testimony. Sister Deborah Onuminya, Sister Jane Kinsley, and Sister Glory Ernest. Sister Deborah Onuminya, Sister Jane Kinsley, and Sister Glory Ernest. Make the hand bigger for Jesus as they make their way forward. Keep clapping for Jesus. If the hand clap is for Jesus, you will not stop. Just keep clapping. <laughs> Sister Deborah. Hallelujah. So you confirm your name and then you tell the church what God has done for you. In summary. Good morning, church. My name is Deborah Onumia. Um, last year, August... My job lost me, so I was devastated, but I still thank God. So in that period, Command the Day started, and I started joining the prayers and trusting on God for the new job. Then um, fast forward to February on the 5th precisely, the prayer that was made that day was for people that doesn't have job, unemployed people. So I came to, this, to the prayers, and I prayed fervently. Then the following day, on the 6th, before 11 a.m., I got a call from the HR department of my company in Lagos State that I should send my CV. So I was like, why are they asking for my CV now? So I reluctantly sent the CV. So the following day, I got another call that I'm ready for interview. I said, yes, I'm ready for interview. They did the interview online. They did another interview online. Then the third day, I got another call. So after that, I did not get any call from them again, but I just trust in God. But I was not even expecting anything from that company. Then down to on the 28th of February, the last Wednesday of February, when that sister came to testify of how she trekked from federal housing to Glory Dome because she was not having transport, and the way God blessed her on Sunday from a stranger. So I just came to that testimony. I said, God, my own is not money or his job that I needed. Thank God on the 29th, the last day of February, they called me and they sent me an email. They took me to a different department, a more relaxed department. Right now, people of God, I have a job. I will partook in the match salary. I'm not taking it for granted. I think my name will not be highly accepted. Put your hands together for Jesus. The same company that laid her off, called her back, and now she has a better role, a better position, and she's here to give God praise. Make that hand bigger for Jesus. You confirm your name and then you tell the church what God has done for you. Hallelujah. My name is Jane Emanuela Kisubon Okun. I've been in ministry for a long time and I thank God for the grace in Donami's church because it has been pushing me forward. Even in the faces of challenges, God has used his servants, Dr. Pastor Pen and Nature, keep on visiting me in my dreams. And the last day, the one he visited the first time, he looked at me, he was sitting on the rock. He said, do what you are passing through. People call it barrenness. And then he prayed for me. He said, God will see you through. He came the second time. He said, he said, God will see you through. And then he came the third time. He prayed for me. And then when he came again, he said, receive your children at once. Because there is this challenge I've been having since I got married. And that challenge has been there. I've been praying seriously. And when God used his servant to pray for me, they, I don't know what it is. I don't know what the doctor said. They may call it twins fibro, but I know it's twins fine boys. That is faith. And then when pastor prayed for me, everything melted. Because the word came back to me. He said, whatever has been blocking your womb will be melted. And today, when I told you, everything has gone. I do not feel that strong hold that has been blocking my womb. So I have come by faith and said, Pastor, you are my mentor. God has sent you. And so, and so the, 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 the stone-like the, the stone 
um, object there, the fibroid, melted by that encounter, and the womb obviously is open to take in. Give your hands, put your hands together for Jesus. You confirm your name and then you tell the church what God has done for you. Praise Master Jesus. My name is Glory Ernest. I am here to give God the glory and to the shame of the devil. My daughter here who is 11 years old, 11 years old, she has a right hip dislocation due to bone crisis. We are admitted in a national, uh, based on university hospital where they say there is a, a display fracture of the right hip, of the right femoral head. So we were in, in base university, they tried to do an open reduction where they tried to fix the bone, but it did not work. We were referred to national hospital. In national hospital, they did a hip surgery for her where they say what they saw inside the hip was pus and they said the, the femoral head is removed and they brought it out and they say she cannot walk again on, unless she do a hip replacement. So we were discharged. They gave her a crutches to use. She refused to use that crutches. On the 27th of November, a friend linked me to commanding your day and now connect on, on the 1st of December, our father in the law, Pastor Paul and Nature said, declare that there is a right hip. It's a right, that right hip is here right now. That, that head of the femoral head is here right now. If that is bone crisis of sickle cell is here right now. I, I claim, I put my right, my hand on her hip. I say amen. And the next day in the morning, I was afraid for her to put the leg on the ground because the leg is so is soft very soft. I was afraid. So on the night, they prayed for all the firstborn. That night, I pray. I woke my son up. We prayed together, and my our father in the Lord said, we should sow a seed. And I sow a seed that day. After that three days, I have an encounter where Pastor Paul and Nature is living right opposite my house, and he saw my son. And he said, come here. What do you want to become in future? And he said, he told him what he want to become. And I now saw a drug edit. I said, look at Pastor Paul and Nature. Come, let's go there so that he will pray for you. As I was dragging him into the direction, I said, Pastor, please, the, the the doctor said she need to do a hip replacement before she can be able to walk. And our pastor lifts her up with, her, with his two hands, said, no, this hip is replaced from today. He lifts her up above sickness, above affliction, above crisis. Since that day, till eternity, she can be able to walk. All the morphine, all the penta, all the drugs I've been giving her, I trust them away. I have come here to return all the glory to God. Do the Lord a big clap and a lot of shout of pain. Give the Lord a bigger clap and a lot of shout of praise. Please, let's put our hands together to Jesus Christ as we welcome the following people again for their testimonies. You hear your name, please, kindly join us right in front here. Let's welcome Mrs. Praise Romanos from wherever you are, please. Kindly step forward. Let's take your testimony. Mrs. Praise Romanos. Also, let's make welcome Ndidi Ebujo. Mrs. Ndidi Ebujo and Sarah Jonah. Give Jesus a big hand as we welcome the following people out. Take the names once again. Welcome Mrs. Ndidi Ebujo, Mrs. Uh, Praise Romanos, and also Sarah Jonah. Give God a big hand. The place is so large. They are coming from their seat. Quickly step forward. I'll take the names again. Mrs. Praise Romanos, Mrs. Ndidi Bujo, and Mrs. Sarah Jonah. Yes, why they are coming, all right, right there is our sister, Mrs. Ndidi Bujo. Everything was practically tight for her and the entire family. Nothing was working and it was like a generational curse that was upon every single member of her family. And right at the Erewhon church, she came up before the Lord and offered a sacrifice. And that sacrifice was the beginning of her positive turnaround. Please come up, Ma. You take off from there. 
and let us know the balance of the testimony. Thank you. Praise the Lord, church. I, my name is Ndidi Ebujo. I came from Canada on Friday just to come and testify. In my family, we are serving in... Now, please, you need to understand, she will go back after this testimony. She came in from Canada testifying to return back to Canada. We are serving in the family, and I was the last. I saw my elder ones, the way they are behaving and everything. I told myself, no, that my case will be different. Because anytime I tell them, they will laugh at me and say, look at you, that we are serving, look at you, are the last. I told them that I am the Joseph in this family, whether you believe it or not. So I was growing after my university. In fact, I was the first graduate in my family before they started going to school. So after my university, we are in area one. One man came from US with a bone in his body. So when the man was preaching, the man talked about sacrifice. Then he said one thousand dollar was one fifty. Then, so and I have money in my bag, and I want to give the money to look for a job. And I told myself, if I give God this thing, God can give me a job, and God can turn my family. So I just rushed back home, bring the money, and just wait as he said. I kept quiet. Since then, everything turned around in my family. My siblings, I started training them. They are, they are, I started training them in school. My other brother, I gave him money. He married a lot of things. I built house for my father in the village. In fact, the houses we have with my husband, I cannot even count the lands we have. The cars, any different type of cars, everything changed. So the day I went to the village, I now, they now put charm for me in my leg. So I now matched the charm. So after everything, I came here. The pastor prayed for me. Everything went. So when I was in Canada, the thing started coming back again. So one commanding the day, I was so angry with my spirit. And I said, God, you are going to remember me that this man must make sure my case, whether you like it or not. And I was crying. So I, I told it's not up to five minutes. He now said that affliction will not come back the second time again. That somebody match him so, so, so time. And the, the thing wants to come back again, but it will not come back again. And I stood up, I started crying. My dad don't know how to explain this thing, but I don't know. But even where I am, people will be asking me, do you use do you use Nigeria soap to wash yourself? Because if we go for interview, any interview I go, they will just employ me. At the time, I even be confused the one, the job I will choose and the one I will not choose. But people will tell me, they are here one year, two years, no job. Then how am I? I told them that, well, it's just God of dynamic that is doing everything for me. So I just, came to, I just came to say, I will give this testimony before I go back. And that's why this testimony, I came back. Let's give the Lord a praise this morning. And that charm also got blasted out the effect of it. And she's healed to the glory of God. Sarah Jonah, please come up. Sarah Jonah. Sarah Jonah. Welcome, please kindly confirm your name again and what God did for you. Praise the Lord, church. I'm Sarah Jonah from Massacre 4. I'm here to testify about the goodness of God for what God has done in my life and my family. I was married on um, 19 December 2020, 2020, sorry, 2020. So after that, different dreams. Till there's a day that somebody told me that I can never ever give birth to children. So I remember the day daddy came to Kurise in Yanya, Maraba. I went there because no time they will ever invite me. Anything, any church I will go. But this one, my husband said, I'm a Donamite and you must go to Donamis. So I go there. On the second day of the crusade, daddy prayed and I feel something losing on my tummy. That same day, I trek from that place to Ado Junction before we see bike, um, car to house. So I came again. After that, I was feeling stomach pain. I went to the hospital. They said it's an infection without knowing that it is a pregnancy. So I cannot take that for granted. This is the baby. This is the baby that uh, daddy lose my womb for. And secondly, not... That God, God brought by prophecy through the mouth of his servant. Give the Lord a praise. I know devil will never be tired of God's children. A second child is here. So I, give, I, I, was, I was pregnant for this baby. Different, different sickness was coming to my way. And it will come when, the, when my husband would not be around. So there was a day they were coming to a center like this, uh, Glory Dawn. I asked them to help me buy an antun oil. To the surprise, God surprised me. As he surprised the devil, he surprised me. The day that I wanted to give birth to this baby, I don't know that it was a labor. And my husband was at home. 
I was just grinding because I have grinding engine. I just feel sharp pain. Immediately I go inside. I said, please help me call doctor. My husband went and called doctor. Doctor says he's on uh, labor. I said, labor? Said yes. Then my husband put an, that same announcing oil on me. Before you could go outside and come back, baby was outside. <laughs> Again, he never tired, you never get tired. And Dr. Pastor Point Nature never get tired of praying for us. So that's where to give God a big hand. That's <laughs> on the 12th of November. I was just same in the grinding engine. Before I could know, this boy was shouting, Mommy, come and see uh, baby's eye. Come and see Jacinta's eye. Before I could know it, this her eye, the eyeball was outside. I, I take her to the hospital. They say, no, you cannot stay here. Go to FMC Kefi. I take her to FMC Kefi. They did everything. They even did uh, C and D to her. When they did, they did it, the eye started coming out like pile. Cover it all. So I was walking from different places. So my neighbor now told me that there is a place they used to pray. What happened when you connected to Command Didi Day prayer? When I, come, when I connect, my prayer band leader sent me a data and asked me to connect to Command Didi Day. And I did it. I did it the first day, nothing happened. The second day, nothing happened. And the third day, on the 12th of Jan uh, January, I had, that is a, there is a baby with a growth in the eye. And it was sent from the pit of hell. He commanded it back to where it's coming from. I said, it's for me. I just received it and placed the phone in the baby's ear. Brethren, the next day I wake up because they used to cover the eye. Now we have the picture here. Um, would like it to be shown, please. Viewers, uh, discretion is also highly advised here. Um, the picture is right here. That was on the 12th of November, 2023, that the surgery was done. Yeah. And the prophecy came on the 12th of January this year during the commanding the day midnight prayer. So what happened? So after that, the eye, we used to cover the eye. After then, we, after that, it declared. So we opened the eye the next day. Behold, this is how we see the baby. The next day, next day. We took the testimony in command of the day and it's now testifying physically. Show us how it was at first. And it was covered and a prophetic declaration came during the midnight prayer. And when they removed the cover the next day, it became... Very next day, it became, show us the progression. That. Can we give the Lord a big clap, the shout of praise. Every mountain the enemy has planted in your life is uprooted and retired back to hell. Shout the Lord and say amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Please kindly tell us the name and what God did for you. Thank you. Good morning, church. My name is Mrs. Praise Romanius. I'm here to glorify God for what he has done in my life and my family. I came from a family where we, you give birth before you marry, both my maternal and my paternal side. The, only, the first person that tried getting wedded before marry died during childbirth. That's my aunt, my aunt. She even married at a very late age. So my elders, my other ones are not married up to now. So when it was my time to marry, I was worried. But I went to my pastor, then Pastor Ruben Isima. He prayed for us and he told us to go, that God is ahead of us. God made way and we got married. A few months into the marriage, I became sick and I went to the hospital. I was diagnosed of HIV AIDS. When we, they tested my husband too, he was negative. And these are tests that we ran before we, we were there. So like, where is he coming from? I was devastated. My husband kept, we kept praying, believing God for starvation. In fact, I, I became very lean. I was just worried. Then one of his service on Wednesday, we came back home late from work. I was in the kitchen trying to prepare dinner. My husband was connecting in the sitting room for the communion service. Then daddy made a declaration, said there's someone here connected. 
you were, you were injected in the dream and you got affected with HIV and that was my situation. And he said, God was healing you now. And he, he cast out that HIV back to pit of hell. I was running out from the kitchen. My mother was running from the sitting room. We met ourselves. He held me and he said, God has released my word through our father and the Lord. And God has, then he said, you should go back and check that that affliction is gone. I was scared to go back and check. After a few days, I spoke to my sister. She said, we should go back and check. And we went and checked. I was pregnant for this, my daughter, with that situation. I was even on drugs, which were viral drugs. We went back and checked. Behold, it was negative. <laughs> when I, I stopped the drugs immediately, after that declaration, I stopped the drugs, but I was scared to check. After I checked, the doctor said, no, it's not possible. It will affect my daughter. I should keep taking the drug. I said, no. My father in law has declared it, and so it is. Today, I'm standing here. This is five years. She clocked five years on Friday. This is five years. God has taken that affliction. I am free. My daughter is free. Secondly, wow. I was... Uh, I was five years, clear. Yes, sir. HIV on antiretroviral drugs cleaned until doctor is saying it's not possible. It's incredible. Five years down the line, nowhere to be found in her blood to the glory of God, sir. And they are here to give glory to God. Do you have the results with you here? No. You bring it. Bring the result. Bring, bring the both results, the former result and the current result. Give the Lord a big clap. Can we celebrate it? The King of Kings, one minute. Let us celebrate. Let us celebrate. Thank Cele you, Lord. We bring you thanks. Thank you, Lord. We bring you thanks. We say thank you, Lord. so faithful. Only you could have done the things we heard today. Thank you for doing for others similarly. Be glorified in Jesus' name. Give the Lord a praise. Please take your seat. Make that clap bigger and better for the Lord. What a mighty God we serve. Father, we are in awe of you and in appreciation of you. Be thou exalted in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say hallelujah. I'd like to welcome every one of us to this second service this Sunday. And I believe that God is uh, set for your blessing as it is a blessing Sunday. And you are not living here the same way you came in Jesus' name. We have quite a number of people that have joined us from all around the world. You heard the testimony of the sister from Canada. She traveled, came in. Not that she has another occasion, but to be in the church this morning to testify of what God has done for her. They asked her, they said, are you using Nigerian soap? What is Nigerian soap? She's using God. She has been washed and cleansed by the blood of the lamb. She doesn't need another cleansing or another soap. And Jesus has turned her situation around. She's a mystery to her world. Look at all those deliverances. That little baby, looking at it like... Um, Professor is here. We'll be introducing some dignitaries that are here today on... Uh, um, spot diagnosis that looks more like a retinoblastoma and Jesus healed it overnight at a declaration in a commanding the day midnight prayer they woke up in the morning took the bandage of the eye and the eye was normal like this it is now what a mighty God we serve many many more things that God has done for us and want to return all the glory and the praise to him in the name of Jesus Christ we have people here from 18 countries. Many of them are here. Uh, they traveled in for the meeting with the sons of the prophet that the senior pastor will be having. People from Belgium, Benin. 18 Pop countries on Sunday morning worship. Is that wonderful? Can we give the Lord a big clap and a shout of praise? We 
we have people from Belgium, from Benin Republic, from Cameroon, from Canada, from France, from Germany, from Ghana, from Ireland, from Kenya, from Niger Republic, from South Africa, from Sweden, from the Netherlands, from Togo, from the United Kingdom, from the United States of America, from Zimbabwe, and from Zambia. Celebrate the King of Kings. And God's servant will be introducing some dig dignitaries here, some excellencies here, including one from another country, and we believe that God's name will be glorified. The power of God, the world is being covered the, with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the seas. As you go back to your countries, you're going with those with the power of God, and we're going to hear testimonies from you in Jesus' name. Our Seas of Destiny today is titled, Your Love and Your Character. By way of summary, God's servant in today's write-up has encouraged us to become people of character by becoming people of love, learning to love like God loves, learning to um, be like God towards our neighbor, um, he talked about the uh, corruptions that has infiltrated the world today, where, for instance, in a university set up higher institutions, students are put under pressure to buy handouts that they don't need or bribe the lecturers. And where they fail to do that, they are made to repeat a whole year in the university or something. Or girls are made to sleep with lecturers and where they fail to do so, they are victimized. And he said that this is lovelessness. This is wickedness. This is the reason why the matter of love must be addressed for godly character to manifest in our society. A young lady came to meet us some time ago in need, in need of help. And she said to God's servant, she said, Sir, men are wicked. And he asked her what happened. And she said she was stranded and looking for financial help. And everybody she asked, all the men she asked, asked her for her body in exchange for money. Then she said, she cannot get anything without somebody asking for her body. Men are wicked. This is the lovelessness and characterlessness of the world that we live in today. But I believe that from the church, change is coming in our generation in the name of Jesus. Somebody say that amen if you believe it louder. Counsel today is ask God to plant genuine love in your heart so that you can live right on the earth. Somewhere in the message today, I know that God's servant will be mentioning it based on what we heard him preach in the first service. Please lift up your hands as we pray together. Say after me, thank you, Lord, for showing me the way of character. I receive the grace to walk on my love life so I can display positive character in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. I'm excited, and I believe that God is set for our lifting in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. We'll be proceeding in the service this morning. We'll be receiving the ministry of the Asaphites. They are the youth chapel choir. The main choir sang in the first service. And the youth chapel choir will be ministering in this service. And they are ministering a medley of songs. These are all songs received and written by God's servant, Dr. Pastor Paul Enenche. And the title is, Excellent Are You, Lord. I believe that as a singer and minister, you will be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Please take note of one of the testimonies that was shared concerning the midnight prayer. Again, that's the, the little girl with what looked like the retinoblastoma. Somebody gave her, her home church leader, I believe that's what she said, gave her data. He sent data to her. Even data of 50 naira. Someone can use it and watch a midnight prayer. So share your love with people. Share data. Invite them, share the links, and let them be part of what God is doing. Let's receive the Asaphites with a clap offering as a minister this morning.
surprises. Hey! We'll stop with all the few we want. Is the one who changed the stories. Hey! He changed the life of Mother God. That's right. We'll stop with God of great surprises. surprises. We'll stop with God of few we want. The one that changed the story. He saved the life of Mother God. Who is the one the King has honor? I am the one the King has honor. Who is the one the King has honor? I am the one the King has honor. Who is the one the King has honor? Who is the one the King has honor? Who is the one? The God of two reward is the one who changed the story. He changed the life of more than kind. The son of God of great surprises. The son of God of two reward is the one who changed the story. He changed the life of more than kind. So who is the one the king has honor? Who is the one the king has honor? adoration. Father, we give you the worship. We give you the supremacy. Blessed be your name. Honor to your name. Ancient of days. Lily of the valley. Rose of Sharon. Thank you. And thank you. And thank you. And thank you. In Jesus precious name. Breathe upon the service this morning. Father, we ask that not one person will live here the same way we have come. Be thou glorified in jesus name before you sit down i'd like you to help me welcome five people around you to the presence of the lord it is well with my soul it is well it is well it is well in the name of jesus it is well with my soul today in the name of jesus it is well it is well it is well in the name of jesus it is well with my soul Jesus is Jesus is Jesus is
glorified, be honored, be adored, be worshiped. Father, breathe upon this service today. Let not one person live here the same way they have come. In Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord a big clap and a shout of praise as you take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. I welcome everyone here this moment in the precious name of Jesus. I believe that it is a day the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Very, very quickly, we shall look at the word. I'll do certain introductions after the word and um, look at what we saw in the first service. This is the blessing Sunday for the month of April and we are going to be blessed. It is the month of the word above only by the power of the word and I'm speaking quickly on the subject, the blessing of the word. The blessing of the word of God. We'll look quickly at the book of Psalm 112 and in verse 1 and 2. Psalm 112 verse 1 and 2. He said, Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord that delighted greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, who delights in his commandment. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. And the generation of the upright shall be blessed. When you fear the Lord, when you delight in his word, you can't escape the blessing of God. In Luke chapter 11 verse 27, all the way to verse 28, there was a woman in the congregation and it came to pass. As he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bear thee. And the paps or the breast that gave you suck. Jesus had so preached. And a woman was celebrating the womb that brought him. The breast that breastfed him. But he said. Can you back, back, back up to verse 27. And the paps that thou hast sucked. Now verse 28. But Jesus said. Yea rather. Blessed are they. That hear the word of God and keep it. It is not the paps or the breast that breastfed me that is blessed. It is those who hear the word. Who keep the word of God. That are the ones qualified to be called blessed. Very quickly by way of introduction. Our objective actually is to understand what the blessing of the Lord entails. And I itemize four things by introduction which I like to go over in this, second, in this second service. First of all, we said we serve a God who is a God of the blessing. There is nothing about curses with God. God is not a cursed God. He's a God of the blessing. And God blessed them and God said be fruitful, multiply. Secondly, we said that the blessing of God is a mandate of creation. When God created man in Genesis 1, 28, the Bible said, and God blessed him and God said, be fruitful and multiply. Replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing. It's, it's a mandate. We are not to struggle to manifest the blessing. We are to flow in the blessing. It's a mandate. London, in, London and I, I'm looking at Manchester, Oldham, Manchester, Croydon, I'm looking at Liverpool. We are together this week by Thursday. Give the Lord a big clap. If you are excited, give the Lord a big clap for the Glory Conference in the UK. It's a mandate. Number three, I'm sure they'll soon see themselves and celebrate. 
To be connected to God is to be positioned for the blessing. When you are connected to God, in Isaiah chapter 61 and in verse 9, it said, their seed shall be known among the Gentiles and their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them that they are the seed which the Lord has blessed. When you are connected to God, when you are related with God, when you are associated with God, you can't escape the blessing. And when we talk about the blessing, we are not just talking of finances or resources. We are talking about everything that is enviable in life. Everything that somebody can look at and say, I wish my life can be like this. When you are connected to God, you are positioned for the blessing. And number four, the blessing of God is packaged through the word of God. Revelation chapter 1 and in verse 3, it said, blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the word. The blessing of God is packaged through the word of God. In Revelation chapter 22 and in verse 14, Revelation 22 and in verse 14, he said, blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Blessed are they that do his commandments. That they may have right to the tree of life. They do his commandments. Hallelujah. Having said all of that, there is a major aspect of things I never said in the first service that was omitted, not consciously. What does the word of God do to bring about the blessing? If the word of God is going to cause me to see the blessing, what does the word of God do? Number one, the word of God breaks limitations and lifts embargoes. It breaks limitations. If there is a limitation in any realm on, in your life, it is breakable by the word. Limitation of living godly. Limitation of being all that you are meant to be. The word of God breaks limitations and lifts embargoes. In Luke chapter 5 from verse 1, Peter toiled all night and caught nothing. And in verse 4, when Jesus had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch into, out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. I've done everything. There seems to be an embargo here. A limitation is on this water. But I will follow your word. And as the word came, that embargo was lifted. That limitation was broken. Beloved brothers and sisters, I don't know the embargo that came with you this morning. Or the limitation that is on your life. I declare it is broken in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Secondly, the word of God reverses curses reverses enemy curses and spells if there is a curse and there is a spell on your life on your destiny is reversible by the world we saw in the life of Jacob in Genesis chapter 24 Genesis 32 verse 24 when he had an encounter with the angel of the Lord and he wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day and when he saw that he prevailed not against him he touched the whole of his thigh and the whole of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him 
And he said, let me go for the day break. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, now, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. If there is a curse, and there is a spell, the type that was literally on Jacob, and he kept on struggling to achieve results, it is breakable by the word. Many years ago, a young man came to me. This young man said, after graduating from secondary school, he attempted to, to go to the university, but every single attempt failed. On further in interrogation, he said that his father was a witch doctor, a native doctor. His grandfather was a native doctor. His great-grandfather was a native doctor. His own father now asked that one of the children should become a native doctor. All of them refused. And he said, he told them, it then means that nobody will cross the level of secondary school. So there was that curse and that spell on their lives. You see, not every struggle is physical. There are struggles that are spiritual. There are struggles that are tied to curses. That young man was prayed for. The word of God was released into his life. That spell was broken. He went into the university and graduated as an accountant. The first one from that family. The word of God in blessing you breaks the curse. Everyone seated here today or connected all around the world that is a victim of any form of satanic curse, ancestral, generational, family spell or curse, I declare it is broken in the name of Jesus. Thirdly, and this is very exciting, the word of God steers up and releases potentials. It tears up potentials. It tears up potentials. It releases potentials. Every time the word of God is released, potentials explode. Again, in that Luke chapter 5 and in verse 4 and 5, obviously the, the lake had the potential to bring out fishes. But that potential was not realized until the word came. Many of you there are things inside you that are not yet out. I'm sure I have some of, I have my classmates here today. But I'll be introducing them later. I'm fully aware that some of them are shocked at some things that they see today. I never sang. I never played an instrument. I was even crowd shy at a point. You understand what I'm talking about? And then from level to level, things be began to come out. Unfolding. Diversities of dimensions. Beloved, you carry so much, but you, you are not aware. You know, until Moses brought out the rod and struck the rock at the instruction of God, nobody knew that the rock carried water. There was an ocean in the rock because for three and a half million people to drink water out of a rock meant, meant that that rock carried an ocean. Nobody was aware until God spoke and he struck the ocean, the rock, and they drank water. If everybody drank four liters, minimally, in the desert you will drink far more than that. That is four big bottles of swan water. I mean, four liters for four and three and a half million people. That's 14 million liters a day times 40 years. Times 40 years, 14 million liters a day. Times 7 days, times 30 days, times 40 years. Was inside the rock and nobody knew until the rod brought out. 
the water from the rock. Do you understand what I'm talking about? There is potential in us. Most of us, by the time we leave this world, we only exhausted 2% of what we are capable of. Only 3% of what we are capable of becoming. But when the word strikes you, the, the content of your life is released. I announce to you today, the word of God coming upon you is bringing out your life's potentials. Is bringing out your life's potentials. Shout the loudest, amen. If you are saying amen, say it louder, believers, say amen. Hallelujah. What does, please take your seat. What does the word of God do to bring about the blessing? Number four, the word of God. stirs productivity and increase. Whenever you release the word on anything. Whether you are releasing that word in Lusaka, Zambia, or in Nairobi, Kenya, or in Cotonou Republic, Benin Republic, or Heathrow West in London, anywhere you release that word, or at the Glory Dome in Abuja, productivity is teared. Do you understand that? Hebrews, sorry, John chapter 2, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and they had no wine. And in verse 5, the mother of Jesus said unto the servants, Whatsoever he said unto you, do it. That is, he is going to talk. And that talk, which is the word, is going to produce result. Hallelujah. There's a classmate of ours that we used to call her Babio. After our chemistry textbook. Where are you, Ababio? <laughs> Is it there? He's a pharmacist today. If you are to turn H2O into C6, okay, let me leave you. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Anybody use that textbook in secondary school? <laughs> what has happened was, Water became wine. It was a biochemical equation. It was a spiritual enzymatic reaction that required no enzymes. H2O became, if it is glucose-based wine, then it's C6, H12O6. Do you understand what I'm saying? Inside So you can see the H2O is still inside the C6H12O6. That is, you multiply the water by, by 6. H2O multiplied by 6 becomes H12O6. Then you added a carbon residue 6 times. That is, Jesus Christ multiplied what they had and added what they lacked. <laughs> to produce wine in abundance. At the instance of the word. He did that in abundance. At the instance of the word. He did that in abundance. At the instance of the word. Is God speaking to somebody here at all? The word of God will bring increase. The word of God will bring productivity. It will bring increase. I prophesy today. Increase is coming your way. By this word I am speaking today. By this word I speak today. Every area of your life where there is decrease, I declare increase right now. You believe that shout the Lord and say amen. The word of God stirs up. Productivity and increase. Number five. The word of God facilitates creation. The word of God can bring about creation. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. 
and God said let there be light and there was light God spoke and creation happened the word of God can create in your life and create in your body and create in your system and create in your environment what you lack what you need what needs to be there and finally number six the word of God triggers a new beginning that is, you are at the junction and you want God to begin something new in your life. You lost a job. You want God to begin something new in your life. A door closed. You trust God for the opening of another door. Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, once the word of God is available in the beginning something must be created if you don't lack the word you don't be afraid of beginning afresh if you are not lacking in the word don't be afraid of beginning afresh in the beginning god created the heavens and the wedding in Cana of galilee was a miracle of a beginning a marriage was beginning and jesus was also beginning miracles Huh? It was the beginning of a, of a wedding, of a marriage. And Jesus was also beginning miracles. And all that needed to begin by the word. I speak to someone today. When this ministry began, all I came into Abuja City with was a bag. I didn't even know where I was going to sleep the, the day we stepped in here to this town. I told you the story before. When I dropped at zone four, zone five, right? The, the, where, around where the market is now. I pulled my shoe, matched the ground, and held my bag. It was as if what kind of madman is this? And I was doing that consciously because the Bible says, wheresoever the sole of your feet shall tread I'll give you as a possession. Long story made short. What started with nothing today is everywhere by his messes. We are hearing testimonies from Kenya, testimonies from America. The other day, the mayor of Leeds, the United Kingdom, was in the meeting. The other day, the vice president of Zambia was in the meeting. The president of Malawi came with his presidential band. That is full presidential meeting. But it started with nothing. A bag. Is God speaking to someone here at all? I don't know what, where you are in life today, but I can announce to you in the name of Jesus, God will begin something unusual in your life. And, it, and that thing is going to change your story. It's going to change everything about you. You believe it? Shout the loudest, amen. Shout the loud most, amen. Hallelujah. Very, very quickly, what do we do with the word to bring about meditation? Sorry, to bring, bring about the blessing. I mentioned three of them in the first service. I'll go over it. How do I handle the word in order to see the blessing of God? Number one is through meditation or meditating on the word. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. He said, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. But you shall meditate there in day and night. So you can observe to do what is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And you shall have good success. True meditation. Number two, it is true the revelation of the word. The revelation of the word. When the word of God is revealed to you, there is a change of story. Revelation of the word. It was the revelation of the word that turned Simon to Peter. 
everything changed and shifted because God showed him something he revealed something to him through the revelation of the word number three it is true compliance with divine instruction obedience if you hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 and 2 it shall come to pass that if you hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shall hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Hallelujah. Number four is through the reading of the word. Reading. That's plain old reading of the Bible. The reading of the word. Revelation chapter 1 verse 3 he said blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand blessed is he that read it that is you are driving the bible on the cd audio bible is playing before you reach your office you listen to five chapters you are walking in the kitchen it is playing right in the background you won't know that something is entering you until you are confronted then it begins to come out it will give you residual deposit of the world when necessary scriptures are needed they, they will just start shooting out blessed is he that read it blessed is he that read it and they that hear the words of this prophecy our children were taught at least three things many many things but number one once you wake up in the morning you will pray and you will read through your bible at least once every year two whatever makes you become the age of ten you fast for three days without food drink water <laughs> some of them have done that plenty times some i think one person did it even before that age was very eager very eager i hear that when you are 10 you must fast let me start now and then you pay tight an offering from your pocket money from every level children send me from money that i gave them they are now sending back to me parental offering and prophet offering <laughs> when i saw it i said oh god this is a serious matter all right <laughs> right maybe your 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 off your giving me a parental and prophet offering will attract physical harvest <laughs> That is direct harvest from souls. <laughs> Hallelujah. The reading of the word. The reading of the word. Through the reading of the word. Learn it yourself. Teach your children. Teach your loved ones. And finally. And this reading of the word. Must happen before they put food in the mouth. Any day. Is that right? It must happen before food enters the mouth any day. And finally, it is true responsible action in the word. Responsible action. You want to see and experience the blessing of God. You must take action in the word responsible action in the world in what in the wedding in Cana of Galilee in John chapter 2 verse 5 they took action Jesus told them to this to do something they did what they were told 
at the lake of Gennesaret, Peter took action, responsible action. In rounding off this morning, what are the kinds of action? I enumerated that in the last service that one can take to see the blessing of God. Number one is upright living. Upright living. Upright living. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 11. It said, by the blessing of the upright, the city is exalted. But it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. Which means there is a blessing that comes with uprightness. Job chapter 1, verse 1. We see the example of an upright man. There was a man in the land of Oz whose name was Job. That man was perfect. He was upright. He was one that feared God and eschewed evil. And they were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. Look at him. His substance also was 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she asses, a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. Greatest. Greatest. People think that integrity, financial integrity, does not go hand in hand with financial prosperity. Job proved it wrong. Job proved that you can be upright and be right up. Job proved that you can combine financial integrity with financial authority. He proved. Wretchedness, crookedness, is the doorway of wretchedness in the spirit. Anybody who, who was crooked to become wealthy today, he has no future, both in this world and in the world to come. Just wasting his time. It's a waste of, a waste of money, waste of resources. Upright living. Number two is kingdom service. Exodus 23, 25. You shall serve the Lord your God. He shall bless your bread and your water. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. He said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. What bothers me, bothered me, and bothers me many times is one day will come in this life when everybody's labor will be over. Am I communicating? Where every pursuit of money will be over. Political ambition will be over. Everything will be over. Except one thing. What you did with your eternity. What deposit did you leave in heaven when you close your eyes in death? Because dust must return back to dust. How many of you know that all of us, we are dust? Is that not what Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 6 said? 7. You cannot start from verse 6 actually to verse 7. Or ever the silver cord be loosed, or the golden ball be broken, or the pitcher be broken at the fountain, or the wheel be broken at the cistern, then shall dust return to the earth as it was. And the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. You know, it is this dust that is making us to disobey God. But this dust will not follow us to hell or heaven. It will just mislead you and remain in the grave. And the real you will either be enjoying in heaven or be roasting in hell. Mislead you. Nobody is more than dust. 
If you are fat, you are fat dust. If you are slim, you are slim dust. If you are tall, you are a tall dust. You are short, short dust. You are light in complexion, yellow dust. You are dark or brown, brown dust. <laughs> and you are black, you are black dust. Everybody is dust. Nobody is dustier than another. Amen. Oh, Everybody is dust. You are moving on the road like this, doing guy, as if your leg does not touch the ground. You are still dust. All the cream and everything we rub on the face is still on top of dust. <laughs> if you tell somebody now, Good morning, dust. He said you have insulted him. <laughs> Let us calm down. Let's be calming down. <laughs> Did you hear what I just said? Let us be calming down. Guy doing guy. You can't greet people. Arrogant shoulder raised like a peacock. Arrogant dust. I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure there are people who will not like what I'm saying this morning. Proud dust. Just move like this. That is proud dust walking. Let me tell you, 24 hours after you leave this world, if you look at your own body, you won't like it. You won't like what you see. Many times, I have deliberately refused to see some bodies that I, I knew. So that the memory of who they were, when I knew them can remain, not the degeneration. What is the aim of all this talk? Don't spend your life's energy on this earth that is not here to stay. Spend your life's time and energy investing in eternity where you will live forever. Kenneth Hagin told the story of her auntie, her mother's sister, who didn't believe in God, didn't believe in pastors, didn't believe in preachers. He said pastors are looking for people's money. He says all pastors should be cut and shot. He didn't even believe in his nephew's ministry until the point of her death when she was on the deathbed, slipped into coma and she came out of coma and told the nurses, please, I beg you, send for a pastor. Send me a pastor. Send a pastor. Send me any preacher. And Kenneth Hagin, Hagin ran down and he said, please tell me, convince me that there is no hell. At that point. Convince me there is no hell. Convince me. Because I, all I see is darkness. And I'm feeling heat right now. Hagin said, there is, there is heaven. There is hell. Before he could finish talking, the woman slipped back into coma and never got back. No opportunity to lead her to Christ. Kenneth Hagin said, as I am talking now, I have an auntie in hell. No opportunity. No opportunity. That is why the Bible says, fading away like the stars of the morning, losing their light in the glorious sun. Thus will we pass, the, that is the, the, the songwriter, from this earth and his toilet. And all who will be remembered for is what we did. If you spend all your life pursuing money. Spend all your life making a name. Spend all your life chasing pleasure. When you die and you go to heaven without doing anything for eternity, what will you tell God? What will you tell him you did with your life? 
You are aloof in church. When it comes to service, you are doing nothing. You have never made anybody, gotten anybody saved. You haven't preached to anybody. When I gave my life to Christ, my first, one of my first converts, tell her what is here, that I, I just went straight to him. Very rough guy in secondary school. The, guy, the type that intimidated every other person. In fact, when you see his red eyes in those days, you have to clear for him. Was that not 1986? That I, 86, 87, I caught him and I preached the word to him forcefully. He handed over his life to God, became a missionary almost immediately, went to the country where he had to ride camel, ride donkey to preach the gospel. Are you following what I'm saying here today? You spent all your life doing things that are just mundane and ordinary that has that had to do with this world. And yet every day you are asking God, bless me, bless me. You have never led a soul to Christ. You have never even invited your neighbor in your neighborhood. You have never told anybody about God. One of us here got one of the books and distributed it to all his employees. He said, read this book. It is word-based, career and workplace wisdom. We both people, all of them, they are calling, they are thanking, I th thank you, thank you for giving us this book. That book sparked a revolution among them, sparked up a foremost, topmost hospitality establishment. Who is your life touching directly or indirectly? Evangelistic service, in house kingdom service, in house. When that is your decision, you won't need to beg God, bless me, bless me, like people do all the time. You won't, you won't beg God for blessing. You shall serve the Lord your God, and it is mandatory for Him to bless. If God does not beg you to serve Him, you will not need to beg Him to bless you. Please take your seat. In rounding off, because of time, kingdom service will produce the blessing number three honoring God with our resources. It is called the tithes, it is called the offerings. When this construction was going on at the area one church this should be like 2017 towards the conclusion i stood in the church and i said this is what me and my wife we have done in terms of financial releases we flattened two accounts big accounts that we, we have been saving we flattened it zero zero one of our member says anosha works in one of the banks. When we wrote that one to close the account, the manager wrote, sent back to us, please leave the money first. Leave it for now until the end of the month. We obliged them. That account was flattened. God knows that what I can't give him is what he didn't give me. <laughs> Say day he has not given it to me. If I have dropped my body, my own life into the offering, is it money I won't drop? <laughs> look at the way, look at the operation. Last night we were in commanding the day. In the morning we were in workers' meeting. Tonight we will be in the midnight prayer. Tomorrow morning I have pastors' meeting. There are pastors from Cameroon here. Pastors from, how many of the pastors have already come from for this, for this um, pastors' meeting of tomorrow? They are here from all over the world, from uh, Côte d'Ivoire. Côte d'Ivoire. And, and several places. So we have the pastor's meeting from morning till evening and then by the evening we have the kingdom financial stewards meeting and then the midnight, midnight prayer and then Tuesday morning is healing and deliverance service and then midnight prayer and then Wednesday um, uh, communion service and midnight prayer and then we hit the road to London, England for the conference and then command the day from London. 
that's how we are living our lives. The sleep of a laboring man is sweet. If I feel so tired and I just hit the, the bed, within a few minutes, if I get up, it was as if I slept for six hours. My wife said, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how, how, I don't know how you do it. So when I mention 30 minutes or 15 minutes is, is possible. <laughs> when, when I, when, not, not the whole night though, so that you don't go and kill yourself. <laughs> so when I mention, we, me and my wife, we have given so and so. This young man wasn't married. He had 50,000. He has been, any money he get, he will put it in his pocket. No job, graduate, no job. He will put the money in the pocket until he gathered 50,000. Where he had it in area one, he said 50,000. He told his fiance, go to, the, to, 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 to my house, to the room. Check the suit pocket. You will see inside it 50,000 naira. Don't take transport money from it. Don't touch it. Go straight to church. Drop it as my sacrifice. That was boom. Jehovah changed his life. Is it four weeks later? Somebody said, can you do contract? He said, yes, I can try. He, doesn't, he didn't have any company registered. They gave him a job of a hundred million. He began to look for company to use. He called one of his friends. The friend said, we'll share the money. If we use my car. He said, no problem. He profited 20 million. That was where his journey started. 22, 2017 till now. By the time we're talking last year, he said his job range is about 20 something billion now. It's financial range. God is not looking for who to cheat. He's not looking for who to use. He's looking for lives to change. And people struggle. I, 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 uh, how can I give my money to God? Your money, when, was, when last did you determine your heartbeat? As you slept last night, how, what did you do that made you to wake up? Let me stop there. Doctors are here. Blendical doctors are here. They will tell you. 102 people die per minute by statistics. It may be more now. Professor of Public Health may tell us. So you can calculate how many people died since we came here. Per minute. All right. Some slept last night. They couldn't wake up in the morning. So in him we live and move. In him we have our being. He doesn't owe us anything. We owe everything to him. Our life, our time, our breath. If somebody is in your teaching hospital and they put an oxygen prof, do you know the... Well, the oxygen cylinder per day, do you know how much they pay? Is it 20,000 or 50,000 per day? That's the bill in National Hospital here. Right? And if, if they are, okay, let's put it at 30,000 30, per day if you're on oxygen. Let's say one month, 900,000, almost 1 million to pay to breathe. How much have you paid today? If somebody is having end stage kidney failure, or any of those things, and he's on dialysis. He's paying like 20,000 per session of dialysis. See, they do it three times a week. Three times a week, that's like 60,000. Multiply it by four. To go to the toilet and use the restroom. How much did you pay when you went this morning? Somebody lift up your right hand and say, thank you, Jesus. Say it louder, say, thank you, Jesus. For the privilege of life. I do not take it for granted. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Lord. For the privilege of life. I give you the praise Lord. In the name of Jesus. Honor God with your resources. What they call the tithe is minimum. It's barest minimum. Our life, the whole of who we are belongs to God. Honor God. With your resources. Number, number four is being a blessing to your world. Especially the poor, the less privileged. It is a channel of the blessing. Being a blessing to your world. Especially the less privileged. You see what Proverbs chapter 19 verse 17 said. He said, he 
that pit has pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord. And that which he has given, will God pay him back, pay him again. When you are doing things for people that can't do it for themselves, you are actually giving God loan. You are loaning money to God. And God does not owe anybody. No, he will pay you and overpay you and pay you with multiplied interest. He won't just give you money. He will give you health. He will give you peace. He will give you marital stability. He will give you, he will give you preservation and protection from the forces of darkness. He has pity on the poor. When McCordy for a, a meeting some time ago, two, two girls came to me. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. My wife said, do you know them? I said, I don't know them. He said, you are the one paying their school fees. I didn't know them. I didn't have to know them. One was reading English. Two of them were reading engineering, mechanical and so on. They graduated. The first one came after graduation and said, thank you, sir. I finished my university that you sponsored me through. I think they were orphans. You see, I'm working in a bank now. And I decided to bring the bank, uh, uh, whether you can open an account with us, church can open. <laughs> I didn't know them. There are plenty of them everywhere. I am not afraid for my personal tomorrow by his mercies. Because the things that guarantee it, they have been done. You, you, you give, there are people, even their parents in the village can't get a dime from them. Friends can't get nothing from them. Loved ones can't get anything from them. He that has pity on the poor, he lends to the Lord. And what he has given, God will pay him again. Look at Proverbs 28 and in verse 27, and then I re read one more, and we are true. He that giveth unto the poor shall not lack, but he that hideth his eyes. The man is poor, he's looking for your help, but you are hiding your face. He shall have many acres. You will not be cursed. Finally, what action of the word will bring us the blessing? It's walking in faithfulness. Proverbs 28 verse 20. A faithful man shall abound with blessings. But he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. Abound with blessings. In Daniel chapter 6 verse 1, all the way to verse 3. Please Daniel to set over the kingdom 120 princes which should be over the whole kingdom. And over these three presidents of whom Daniel was first that the princes might give accounts unto them and that the king should have no damage. Daniel was preferred because he was faithful. He was faithful. Faithfulness is reliability. Before God and man, are you reliable? Are you reliable? Are you Faithfulness is trustworthiness. Are you tr can you be trusted? Do you speak and your word count? Or when you speak, they have to give you 80% discount. Because 80% of what you say, you won't do it. You, don't, you are saying it, but you don't mean it. There is a limit to the blessing of such a person. A faithful man. When somebody gives you money to do work for him, are you faithful? Are you faithful? You are a contractor, they gave you road to do. And you did very shabby road that began to kill people in a short time from accidents. Apart from existing under the curse, God will hold you responsible for the lives being lost on those, on those roads. They gave you money to do hospital equipment and you do shabby substandard. Beloved brothers and sisters, if you want God to bless you, be faithful, be reliable, be trustworthy. Be dependable. Let your word count. One day somebody told my mother, my mother told somebody, 
that I was coming home. I was coming home. Um, that I said I was coming home, visiting home. And the person said, hey, are you sure? Will he come? Mama said, oh, go to sleep. If that one said he's coming, just go to sleep. He's on his way coming. B by experience of the child she knows, doesn't play with words. So when I arrived, he said, didn't I tell you? He's coming. Go to sleep. Those who know you, what do they know you for? It will determine the extent to which God can go with you. What do they know you with? There are people who play with lies. Do you know I called you yesterday? What time? Around 5 o'clock. Did you check your phone? Eh? I didn't see any missed call. Oh, no, I'm just joking. That is a guy who has no future, both in this world and in the world to come. Some people use lies to joke. I was telling one comedian one day, I said, there are neat comedies you can do without lying. He got angry. He said, yeah, that it is like the way people write songs now. Is that like the way people write a script? You can write comedy. It doesn't have to be true. I said, no. I have plenty stories. If I tell you now, you'll be rolling on the ground. <laughs> Plenty genuine, authentic stories. If I tell you now, there is a little dog in our house. Anytime I am at the dining, this dog will come. I will give it bone to eat. He will eat. Hang around me, throw his hand up. Then when I leave, he will leave. This guy got angry because I told him, tell stories that are true. You see, be reliable. Be trustworthy. Be dependable. Let your words count. And you will be shocked. We are God. I've seen billionaires before. Billion, not that they say they are billionaires. I know that are now looking for money. Because their words couldn't count. Not that they say they were billionaires. I know. Lie. Crookedness on truth, dealings that are not straight, crash from up all the way down until 5,000 becomes an asset where you once had nine zeros in your account. Stand up on your feet. Somebody say amen. Child is crying wolf. Wolf, wolf, wolf. The parents come. You see, I'm just joking. Next day, wolf is coming, wolf is coming. The parents run out to look for the wolf. You see, I'm just playing. Wolf is coming. Third time. I'm just playing. Next day, he say, wolf is coming. Nobody answered him. And the wolf really came. Dealt with him. Took him out. Wolf is coming. Oh, no, I'm just playing. First time, second time, third time. Because what you anticipate, you precipitate. What you imagine will emerge. The last time, wolf came. But because they consider he is not reliable, he is just still playing, he is still playing. The wolf deleted him. That's why it is good. I have a problem. Give me money. They gave you money. And there was no problem. Return it now. Iba. That's a quite bad language. <laughs> Iba. For where? They gave you a second time. Return it now. Iba. The third time you have problem that will take you to prison. You say, please, I need money. Sir. And you went to prison straight because you haven't been reliable twice. If you were, they would have assisted you. You wouldn't have gone to the prison. A faithful man will abound with the blessing.
Somebody say loud amen. Please stand up on your feet. One, one man met our, one of our members here. He knew that I am his pastor. He said, any amount of money you need to do business with, provided it's under 20 billion, let me know. The man is not a member of our church. He just um, saw a young man, upcoming businessman. Provided it's under 20 billion, let me know. So he gave him 150 million first without signing no document. He said, Because I want to encourage you, and then I, I know that you are under such a pastoral covering. By the time the time elapsed, he returned the, the money 150 million tidy on the dot. No paper was signed. No story was told. The respect, the respect of that man plus the respect of his pastor remains very high in the, in the sight of the giver of the money. Instead of telling story, go and do laborers work and raise the money and redeem yourself. Because when you play with opportunity, you invite adversity. You invite, you invite calamity in the future. There are some experiences we have today that is a test for tomorrow. It's not the real thing. God is just testing you against tomorrow. But you will pass the test. I think I have ever preached this morning. Lift up your hands and let's appreciate the King of Kings. Appreciate the Lord of Lords. Appreciate the I am that I am. Thank you, Master. Be upstanding everywhere you are. I think some people can take this song. Shall I rise first? Someone took this song in the night vigil. Oh. Be upstanding, people. One day Stand still And be no more When all shall end One day Shall start for all But great One day Time shall stand still and be no more when I'm one day, Lord. Eternity, eternity, for great and small. The trump shall sound, the trump shall sound.
lift your hands and lift your voice. Go ahead and appreciate the King of Kings. Appreciate the Lord of Lords. Appreciate the I am that I am. We are going to be very, very fast because of time. Please, we have the communion and the blessing. And so just be patient a little bit and we shall be true. Lift your hands and voice now and say, Father, thank you for your word to me this morning. I am grateful for the release of your word. Be glorified, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Again, say, Father, thank you for your word to me this morning. I am grateful for the release of your word. Be glorified, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and speak to God. the Lord. The drum just sound, the drum just sound, the God is born, the Lord was first, and those are right around, to me the Lord. Right in the earth, and so shall you ever be with you. It's your two answers. We're going to pray. We're going to take all the prayers together right now. Say, Father, Father I, receive the grace I receive the grace for upright, for upright living. living. Deliver me Deliver from any form any of crooked living, Lord, living. in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Again, say, Father, Father I, receive the grace. I receive the grace next for kingdom service. For kingdom service. Help me, Lord. Help me not to waste my life pursuing the ordinary things of the world the grace to serve you i receive it lord in the name of jesus again father i receive the grace to honor you with my life with my resources i receive that grace oh lord in the name of jesus again father i receive the grace to be a blessing to my world especially to the less privileged I receive that grace now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Again, say, Father, grace to be faithful, to be reliable, to be dependable. I receive that now in the name of Jesus. Go ahead, open your mouth and speak to God. And Lift up your two hands. Father, we give you the praise and we give you the honor. Lift your two hands and ask the Lord this morning to release upon you a seal of his blessing. Lord, I know you have a blessing for me this morning. As I receive the grace to live in this way, I receive the seal of that blessing. Lift your hands.
woman. Lay your hands upon this sister, upon this mother. Father, Mahashadara, the hand of blessing. When I say in the name of Jesus, the yoke shall be broken. Embargo shall be lifted. Limitation shall go. Receive the touch of his hand. In the name of Jesus, one, two, and three, shall I receive. 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 glorified be the hands high God touch someone he name a woman with a name that a lady with a name that started an A with an aff affliction on the breast whether it's a pain whether it's a growth it is cleared out now and everyone who came here in, the, in that category there is an affliction on the right breast and then on the left I cause it to go the tumor dries up. The pain dries up. Amen. Right now. Check it, confirm it, run out quickly. Whether you're on the gallery. That's right. Name starts with an A. Somebody's been healed of a right ear that is blocked. I command that ear. Open right now. In the name of Jesus. You close the left, you can hear with it. A lower back condition has just been healed. Thank you, Master. Give the Lord a big clap of hand. Take your seat as these people step forward while these are coming out i would like our communion stewards all right just a moment while they come out right today just listen to this the command the day midnight prayers do you have that professor's clip for us, the professor that testified on command the video, clip of it. If you have it, you can play it for us. As well as the clip from the UK. Those are short clips. Just quickly play them for us. It happens 11.30 in the night, across to 12.30 and beyond. God bless you. Yes, go ahead. Volume. Start from the beginning and volume. Hello, everyone. I am Professor Becky Tabo, 
an ardent and happy addict of commanding the day midnight prayers. It has revolutionized my life in all aspects, especially the jacking up of my prayer fire and my spiritual fire with consequent spiritual impact and influence. The word saturated prayers and the pinpoint accurate prophetic declarations with instant action unction, as well as the mind blowing, the faith lifting, the jaw dropping, and the ear tingling testimonies are simply amazing. A trial will convince you. Join us daily by 11.30 p.m. to remain above only. That's our place. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a praise. That is professor, professor with professorial expressions. Hey, go ahead. The next one from the UK. Or, or Uganda. And those of us with the testimony. All right. Above only, that's my place. My name is Martha Begumia from Uganda. I'm very grateful to God for this Commanding the Day platform. Um, I've been able to receive answers for two requests that have been tabling. Number one is about restoration of my mother's health. She's been in hospital for two months because of stroke, paralysis, and hypertension. But I'm so grateful to God that last week she sat on her own. She's able to feed, she's able to sing, and I know any time from now she'll be walking and she'll be back again, back, back to her normal self. The other thing I want to thank God for is restoration of communication with my husband who we've been separated for 10 years. I'm so grateful to God that he can now send me messages which are respectful and send money for the welfare of the children. And I'm so grateful to God because it seems that he's restoring my marriage. I thank God so much for Pastor Becky, for Pastor Paul and Enche. What sort of sacrifice is this that you have given to the world? May the Lord remember you. May the Lord bless you forever for us. Thank you very much. God bless you. Bye-bye. Give the Lord a big clap and a shout of praise. Commanded the midnight, command the midnight prayer is exploding, exploding like fire and I believe that you will hashtag commanding the day midnight prayer, hashtag commanding the day, hashtag midnight prayers. So that anybody who is looking for where to pray in the midnight, once they try to check online, it will take them there straight and then it will randomize the the, uh, the the platform also you can um, use the hashtags on your personal posts your pictures on all social media and the Lord bless you in the precious name of Jesus tomorrow Monday we have in the morning sons of the prophets meeting everyone who is submitted to the mantle of this commission ministers of the gospel somebody asked me yesterday a woman in ministry uh, a, a, a lady, he said, oh, is it only for men? No, no, no. Everybody who is under the cover of the ministry, who is in ministry in one way, way or the other, whether it is ministry of the world, music ministry, or anything like that, you are all welcome. It's a sons of the prophets. It's just like international ministers filming for our conference, but just an impartation for the beginning of the year. It is 11 a.m. right at the event center. With, we are thinking that we might need to place tents and so on. Um, invite your friends, invite your loved ones. Well, that are ministers of the gospel. And the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. In the evening, 5.30 p.m., we have what we call kingdom financial stewards. Those that God is raising to, to be millionaires and billionaires in our generation for the sake of the kingdom. Many of them are coming and God is changing and transforming lives. I shared a testimony of a man that sat in the church here one day and, and, God, and told God, Lord, what do I do to meet, move to the billions? And he heard what God told him and he moved to the billions. Now we are going for crusade every time. Port Harcourt crusade, Kaduna crusade. Can you show us clips of this crusade? Port Harcourt crusade was in, in, in February. Kaduna crusade was in March. Media, you can help. Show just sharp clips of these crusades. That was Kaduna crusade that, that held just a few weeks ago. That's at the Amodobelo Stadium in Kaduna. And then we had the, the Port Harcourt crusade that held also at the Lakaya Stadium in, that's Port Harcourt Crusade, at the Lakaya Stadium in February, 
We're having London, England um, this week. And all of you in London and Europe, and just get set. We have, um, yes, that's right, the handbill. London is literally plastered with handbills. Can you show us the buses and the, and the outreach that is ongoing? Yes. Those are London buses with the handbills, with the posters, with the billboards, and our people going everywhere. Yes. Can you show us those? The, everybody is advertising. White, black, brown, yellow. I thought you were going to show us clips of our people going out of our So, that is London, Ethiopia in May, Kenya in May, Canada in June, America in July. September is where? Canada, yes, America in July. September is, Ang is that September or October? September is Angola. We have, keep going. Venezuela in October. August, Venezuela in August. We have also Colombia in the same August. We have Malawi. We have Zimbabwe. And so forth. So it goes on like that throughout the year. And none of these crusades do we take a dime of offering. We went in Equatorial Guinea, also is right there. We went to impact the people. We didn't go to take anything from them. So there are people, including ourselves. That Kaduna crusade you saw, my wife and I told the church, don't bring any money. Send us, let the Kaduna people send us the bill of the crusade. And that was how it was. And so people handled it like that. Somebody, one person handled the Portacot Crusade. Another set of people handled the Cardinal Crusade. You just heard about the set of people that handled the Cardinal Crusade. And one of those guys who sat in the congregation and he said, Lord, what, tell me what it takes to move to the nine zeros. He pledged that for this year, every quarter is 250 million for crusades. Every quarter, that is his pledge. And by the time four quarters are over, he should have done one billion. So what is he having money for except for the sake of the gospel? These kingdom stewards is what we pray, preach, prophesy, declare for people to break out of limitations and step into that realm where God can put resources in your hands for the sake of the kingdom. It's tomorrow by 5.30 p.m. The one whose testimony I shared in the, in the course of preaching who emptied his 50,000 naira, the one whose testimony I just shared now, all of them will be there. Ensure that you are there and ensure that God will change your story. And uh, as pastors who are there can also be there. And of course, the London Crusade commences um, this week, Thursday, 
and we trust the Lord for a great time. Let's please go ahead and tell me. Yes, sir. A prophetic word came that God was healing people, um, ladies whose name begins with, uh, with A, of breast conditions. We have here Sister Abigail and also Sister Ada. Ten years ago, sir, she was in a toxic relationship and the person that promised to marry her, they had the confrontation and fought and the person hit her on the chest, on the breast. Wow. Uh, she went and even did a memogram and after oh, everything, no. yes, sir, but there was a deposit of pain on that breast and she came for a decade, sir. Right now, the power of God just blasted off the pain wow. and she's healed now. Wow. Yes. It's yes, so we have Sister Ada here. Last night she had a dream. A woman appeared to her and confronted her in the dream and said, I am going to deal with you. And before the woman left, she hit her on the left breast. When she woke up this morning, sir, terrible breast pain. And her name is Ada. At the instance of that word, now the pain disappeared Incredible. forever. What of her? Yes, so we have Sister Laraba here. Um, a year ago, she had a dream where a colleague appeared to her in the dream and hit her on the chest, on the, the, the left breast as well. And when she woke up, very terrible pain, and that pain lasted for one year. But right now, God just blasted it off her body. Give the Lord a Lift up your hands. Every evil arrow returns back to you. You can give me two or three more so we can proceed. Jesus, precious name, I declare the agenda of hell broken. Help from above. Mercy from above. That is your portion. Sir, another sister here who was healed of breast tumor, that was accompanied with pain. She's had it, she had had it for one year, came in for a service um, a few services ago, and the lump disappeared. Wow. Totally disappeared. Wow. But the residue of the pain was still there. But in today's service, the pain disappeared. So lump and pain gone. Give the Lord totally of Somebody say in the name of Jesus, every stranger in my life return back to hell. So during the command, oh, sorry. it was on the lump left. On the midnight prayer where you call the sister with name starting M oh, wow. with breast lump. Wow. That was when the lump disappeared. Incredible. Congratulations. Similarly, um, last night during the command the day midnight prayer, um, someone with the name Mercy having a breast condition, she said her name is Eberu, Eberu which is Mercy also. She said after, as soon as that word went forth, the pain, that excruciating pain, took back to Incredible. her. Incredible. Our sister here, you gave a word that song. God's servant gave a word that someone is being healed of lower back pain. She said three days ago she had, um, in the dream of the night, someone told her that she was going to be paralyzed. She woke up with that excruciating pain going to the leg, almost making her unable to walk. But as soon as that word went forth, the pain returned back to her. Give the Lord a praise. Lift up your hands. Wow. Jesus. Be free. Be free. In Jesus' precious name. Finally. So that we can proceed. Another confirmation of the declaration that God was healing an A name of breast condition. She has had this condition for six months. The moment her word came, that pain left. She can't feel it anymore. It is over. In Jesus' name, amen. And all the rest of you, your testimonies are permanent. In Jesus' name. Let's celebrate the King of Kings as they return back to their seat. Give the Lord a celebration. the Lord a big clap and a shout of praise. One more time. We'd like to welcome everyone here today. We believe that the Lord has blessed us. Please go over the message you have heard and very soon we shall be taking the communion and then we shall be on our way. The online foundation class is on. Please register. Again, we welcome all the 17 countries that are here this morning. The Lord bless you. Give the Lord a big clap and a shout of praise. You will not return back the same way. In Jesus' name. And we are delighted also to recognize the presence of the immediate past president of the country of Sierra Leone, His Excellency Ennis Bai Koroma. We appreciate it. come you see? This today might not be his first day here, but we are happy to recognize and welcome you. And we believe that you will take our blessings to your nation in Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord a big clap and a shout of praise. Now, I, um, 
You know, one of the things that we do in leadership is to communicate principles through practical examples. I reach out to my classmates and I told them that I want, wanted us to have a get together that is both physical and spiritual. My aim is to ensure that everyone that I know that I have grown up with, I will do my best to ensure that we go to heaven together. Somebody say loud, amen. And um, I feel highly honored that they honored me. We see, one of the best things that God can do for you is for those who know you when you were small, when you were nothing, when, you, when there is nothing, when there is no prediction of whatever you can become, to see you today and recognize and respect and value you and, and, and take you very seriously. That's the kind of thing that God has done for me. See, the Bible says a prophet is not without honor except among those who know him. But God has helped this prophet to be with a lot of honor among those who know him. <laughs> if we go to, to go for crusade today, everywhere is jammed. People are hanging on trees. That was the same place we grew up in. Go to the village, the same story. And I appreciate you all for coming. And I, I let you know that I will not take, you, take it for granted. Some of them have come out of very busy schedule. Um, this is our class of 40 something years ago. Secondary school class in Wesley High School, Utupo in Benue State. And I'm recognizing first among them, Honorable Dr. Sam Ode, who is the current Deputy Governor of Benue State. A member of, the, of that class. He was previously the Minister of State for Niger Delta under President Goodluck Jonathan Srijim. The class is so blessed. So blessed, you see. The school as a whole is blessed. We, we, we sang Methodist hymns uh, every morning. We went to the assembly every single day. And those things were embedded and we never knew they were there until it produced greatness. Next to him is Professor Steve Abba, medical doctor, who is also professor of uh, public health. He was the head boy of the set. <laughs> and now the Deputy Vice Chancellor Admin of Federal University of Health Sciences in Otupo. Next is Agbo Ochepe, who is the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Education and Knowledge Management in Benue State. Agbo Ochepe is foundation member of church. If Dunamis is 27 years old, then he is 27 years in the church. If it is 28 years, then he's 28 years in the church. You are welcome. We have, um, I'm sorry, I'm going to skip some people. Um, some of the other boys there, who is uh, uh, here by association, also from Wesley High School. And of course, you know General, who is there from uh, Mount St. Michael, a lady, about many, many years before our own time. Now, next is um, Honorable, Honorable Barrister Eloka Tasi Amadi. He was immediate commissioner of works in River State, also the same class. Dunami started 21 years ago in Port Harcourt in their facility. He made facility available for the start 21 years ago and he's still doing very well and doing a lot of things. He's sorry, I forgot to say that Agbo Chekwe is a minister, altar minister of Dunamis Church. He ministers on the altar, takes testimonies, does everything on the altar. Dunamis and Deacon Eloka is a deacon, Dunamis Central in Port Harcourt. God bless you. That's what I mean. And he has been in church for like 25 years also. Give the Lord a big clap and a shout of praise. We have others like that who have been in church for a long time. Um, Architect Elijah Onoja is here. Um, and several of them, you are all welcome in the precious name of Jesus. Beloved, I would like to challenge you. You should go and do likewise. With Honorable Sam, it is primary school, secondary, the same primary school, the same secondary school, and the same university. <laughs> okay. uh, with Professor Steve, it is the same secondary school and the same university. I both the same the same secondary school, the same university, and so on and so forth. And we, and we welcome you, and I know you are not returning back the same. Every other person here, please don't envy us or envy them. Um, I believe that it's an example for you to go like, and do likewise and touch the people that are around you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Give the Lord a big clap and a shout of praise. We have others that are not here. Professor Agaba Idoko, Professor of Internal Medicine, is right in America. 
I think we had like five or six medical doctors from the class. We have pharmacists, we have lawyers, and several of those. All right, can you stand? Okay, sorry. The, 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 the whole of the group, can we stand, please? All the way, all the way. Give the Lord a big clap of them. All the way, all the way, all the way. Welcome you all, welcome you all, welcome you all, welcome you all. There are some among them that are bullies at that time, but I won't mention it now. They know themselves. Give the Lord a big clap. Please be seated. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Ajayibi, I'm sure you are hearing what I'm saying. He's the number one. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, everywhere you are today, you need to surrender to Jesus. You want your life given to God. While we do that communion, still was please step forward as we administer the communion. You are seated here. You need Jesus to be Lord of your life. You want today to mark a new day. Jesus, here am I. Touch me. Change me. I want to become a new creature. I want Jesus to be Lord over my life. I surrender my life to you. I give myself to you. Stand up on your feet. Pick up your Bibles. Pick up your bags. And quickly rush to the front. And let me receive you. I'll give you the count of 15. Pastor, what you preached this morning touched my life. I want to give myself to you. I want to surrender to you. I want to be saved. Rush to the front here at the count of 15. One. Lord, I give you my masturbation, lesbianism, pornography, gambling, fraud. I want the yoke broken. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to be saved. I want to be free. Again, I'll give another count of ten. Rush to the front quickly. One, one more time. Go. One. I've got my mind made Two.
welcome you all in the precious name of Jesus. God bless you. Place your hand on your chest again and pray after me and say, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. Deliver me from the power of sin. Today, it is my decision to follow you. No turning back. Forward ever. Backward never. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray for you today. I declare the hold of the enemy broken. Fresh grace to live for God, to do his will, is released upon you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Give the Lord a big clap and a shout of praise. If you are in Dunamis Church for the first time, I would like to receive you in the front. Those of my class people, um, we can receive you together in case you are here. Today is your first time here. Um, but everyone in the crowd, today is your first time in church. Please step forward. Let's receive you right on the altar. And you want to become a full-fledged member of the church. You've been coming. You've been as, as associating here and there. But you are not yet a full member. Also step forward and let us receive you. While they are doing so, everybody stand up with your communion. And we shall be making the declarations right now. All the heads of department, diverse departments, please, you hold on for a meeting briefly. Heads of all departments, God bless you. And the welfare distribution is holding at the end of the service. Listen, everyone who is unable to have what to eat, what to wear, I mean what to drink and so forth. We have been serving welfare for people every single Sunday, every single Sunday. Can you show it? Those who don't know what to eat when they go home. There is food, raw food, rice, yams, and everything. And you can see their troop. There is a big tent outside where that is filled with people under the um, season that we are in where there is so much scarcity and so much shortage. Anyone who feels like being a part of this, I want to be a part of ministering to the brethren. Those who will not have what to eat at home or who are stranded, you want to minister to them, you can let us know can make it available both in the rough food or in cash to make it available for the brethren every single Sunday until further notice and this distribution is going on right now the one of today is happening in Dunamis Church worldwide I'm sure that in London area they, they may serve physical food and so on but everywhere today this food distribution is going on right everywhere if you have pictures of other locations you can help show it to us uh, the, the media in case they show the pictures of their food distribution god bless you in jesus precious name lift up that communion oh that is that is how good the church is <laughs> versus the uh, 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 merging with their pastor because all the time the pastor will forget to take offering and the people will scream and say you haven't taken offering <laughs> that's very abnormal for those who think that church is all about money, I think that the first thing a money person will take is the money first. But you just forgot it. Right? But because you have remembered and you are reminding God to take what you brought, may the blessing of the Lord never leave you. I prophesy upon your hands. I declare that your harvest will not leave you. I declare that systems will come under pressure. They lose their peace and sleep and rest until what is yours enters your hands. In Jesus' name. Leave the offerings up now. In Jesus' precious name, the offering is blessed and it is multiplied in Jesus' name. Pass it on very rapidly. Those online details of giving are on the screen. Once you have done that, you lift up your communion and we shall receive the blessing. The Lord has the key of David. He opens and none can shut. He has opened the door, door for me. And no man can shut the door. The Lord has said, The Lord has the key of David. He opens and none can shut. He has opened the door for me. He has opened the door for me. And no man can shut the door. Can shut the door. I have been it already. I have arrived. 
It's my open door. It's my open. It's my year of open door. It's my open open door. It's my open door. It's my. It's my. It's my. It's my open door. It's my open. It's my year of open door. Yeah, it's my open door. Open door. One more time. It's my. It's my. It's my it's my it's my own window. It's my own It's my open 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 Place your hand on your head and lift up the communion and receive as we make declarations right now. We declare the blessing of God upon you in this month of April in the name of Jesus. This month of April we declare your marital establishment in the name of Jesus. Marital harmony in the name of Jesus. Fruit of the wombs released in the name of Jesus. Financial empowerment and blessings of the works of your hands in the name of Jesus. We declare your preservation going out and coming in. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are blessed. Right now we speak and I declare the blessing. Today, every single limitation and embargo placed on your life is hereby lifted. Amen. I declare the release of your life's potentials. Amen. I decree the trigger for a new beginning in your life. Amen. I declare, first of all, before we go here, I declare... Every curse placed on your life, every spell is hereby broken. Amen. I speak multiplication. Amen. I speak creation. Amen. Now receive this sevenfold blessing. I decree upon you supernatural supplies. Amen. The blessing of supernatural supplies. Amen. The blessing of divine health. Amen. The blessing of divine direction. Amen. The blessing of divine preservation. Amen. The blessing of peace. Amen. The blessing of destiny opening. Amen. The blessing of life. Amen. You shall fulfill your days. Amen. You shall not be cut short before your time. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I decree a new season. Fresh grace. Fresh help and fresh mercy. Whatever my father in heaven has not planted in your body, I declare it flushed out right now. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. In the name of the Father. Amen. Now the Son. Amen. Now the Holy Ghost. Amen. Shout the loudest. Amen. amen. Go ahead and take that communion with faith. There is a way to open it, the, the top one and then open the, the, the under one that has the wine. Fresh grace and help in Jesus' name. Lift up your two hands and receive this blessing. They were just showing us the welfare materials of different locations from Lagos, from Enugu, Kuanambra State, or Kokomai, going Lagos, and so forth. All of them are also doing welfare distributions today. The Lord bless you, bless the churches, and bless every giver in Jesus' name. Lift your two hands and receive the benediction. Don't go until you receive it. If you are a newcomer, please join us in the front. First timer, intending member. As you live here today, as you step into the month of April, the Lord bless you. Adonai keep you. El Shaddai make his face 
to shine upon you as you live here today as you step into the month of April the Lord bless you Adonai keep you El Shaddai make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you and be gracious unto you the Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace in everything you do I say the Lord bless you bless you bless you bless you and give you oh Adonai make his face to shine upon you oh and be gracious unto you and be and be and be gracious unto you the Lord lift up he his countenance on you and give and give you peace the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in the name of Jesus 2024 above only and above only where is your place and above only God bless you happy shake the hands of three people around you welcome them congratulate them welcome them to the presence of the Lord congratulate them congratulate them congratulate them hallelujah God bless you counsel us it's up to you to attend to the people Hey, hold on. Counsel us. Are you no don't, don't snap? Hold on, sir. Hold on. Are you are you moving them? What are you doing? Alright. They are in your hands, okay? Ensure that you do not um Go ahead in celebration, people. <laughs> Hey, 